you and reaffirm as the case may be, that the evidence you shall give concerning this case shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, shall help you God or upon penalty of perjury? Yes. Please state your name and spell it for the record. Lauren Almeida, L-A-U-R-E-N-A-L-M-E-I-D-A. -E and your business address? Um, well, there's no need for a business address. Yeah. You may be seated. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Almeida. Good afternoon. Ms. Almeida, how old are you? 32. And where did you grow up? Newington, Connecticut. Who do you um, currently live with? I live with um, the Dulos kids. And did you graduate high school? I did. Which high school did you attend? Uh, Newington High School. Did you just keep your voice up just a little bit? Newington High School. And uh, did you also attend college? Yes. Where did you go to school? Uh, University of Connecticut. And what did you study at the University of Connecticut? Psychology. Did you graduate? Yes. What year did you graduate? 2013. And uh, you mentioned that you currently live with the Dulos children. Mm -hmm. Did you know someone by the name of Jennifer Dulos? Yes. When was the last time you saw or spoke to Jennifer Dulos? May 24, 2019. And did you know someone by the name of Fotis Dulos? Yes. How did you know Jennifer and Fotis Dulos? Um, I nannied for them starting in September of 2012. Were Jennifer and Fotis Dulos married? Yes. When you met them in September of 2012, where were they living? Uh, Fort Jefferson Crossing in Farmington. Where was Mr. Dulos originally from? Greece. Did he speak English? Yeah. Did he speak with an accent? Yeah. Where was Jennifer Dulos originally from? Uh, New York. And you mentioned the Dulos children. How many children did the Dulos family have? Five. And what are the children's names? I have Petros, Theodore, Christian, Constantine, and Noel. And could you give the jury their age ranges currently? Yep. Currently, Petros and Theodore are 17, Christian and Constantine are 15, and Noel is 13. And you mentioned that Petros and Theodore are 17, and Constantine and uh, Christian are 15. 15. Are they twins? Yeah. So the Dulos has had two sets of twins? Yep, two sets. And when you met them in September of 2012, what was their respective age range? Uh, Noelle just turned <coughs> one, I believe. Krishana Constantine were four, just turned four. And Petros and Theodore were six. How did you get introduced to the Dulos family in 2012? I worked at a daycare center for a few years, and someone that I used to also babysit outside of the daycare told me that she knew someone yeah, that needed help. Well, the question is, how did you end up working for the Dulos family? Well, it, this is preliminary, the overview. You did mention that you worked at a daycare center. Would you just continue your answer? Yeah, so someone that worked for Jennifer and Fotis said that she knew of a family that needed extra help, and I babysat outside of the daycare, so she introduced myself and my sister. And was your sister also a babysitter? Yeah. What's your sister's name? Ashley. When did you first actually begin babysitting for the Dulos family? It was September of 2012. I don't know the exact date. How often would you babysit them beginning in September of 2012? It started off just like a Saturday or a Sunday. Like I would usually work Saturday and my sister would usually work Sunday or we would swap. Um, and then over time, I started to work more and more for them. Were you and your sister the only babysitters for the Dulos family? No. You mentioned that you would work a Saturday or a Sunday. What were your typical hours at that point? It varied, um, but usually like early morning, like 6 a.m. sometimes, because no one would wake up early. And I wouldn't leave until like sometimes 9 or 10. 
Were you still attending school when you first began babysitting for the Jules family? Yeah, I was in my final year. What types of activities would you do with the children while you were babysitting with them? Uh, we did a lot of puzzles, magnet tiles, and games. Board games was a lot. They like to play pretend and dress up. Um, they also water skied, so we would spend a lot of time doing that. Um, and would you actually go water ski with them? Yeah. What did Mr. Dulos do for work when you first met the family? Uh, he owned his construction business. What was the name of the company? Four Group. And you mentioned that it was a construction company. What type of construction? Uh, he was building luxury homes. <coughs> Where was the office for Four Group located? It was in Fort Jefferson Crossing. It's in their, their home. Whereabouts in their home? It was like right above the garage. They had a two bay garage and above that was a space for the office. What did Jennifer do for work when you met the family? I knew she was a writer, but I didn't really know much more than that. Were uh, Mr. Fotis Dulos and Jennifer Dulos ever home while you babysat? Yeah. How often would you say they were home while you were babysitting? Most of the time. How would you describe the dynamic of the Dulos marriage when you met them in 2012? Um, I mean, I tried not to judge, but he was gone a lot, but I just figured that was just kind of what it was in their, their house. But overall, when I first started working for them, they seemed to get along just fine. And how did they act towards one another? Uh, in the beginning. Um, in the beginning, they were nice towards each other. I mean, from what I saw, at least in the beginning. I'm sorry, Miss that? From what I saw, at least in the beginning. And did you continue to babysit for the family for the remainder of your final year of college? Yeah. And for that final year of college, were you just working weekends? Uh, yeah, because I was going to school during the week. I want to direct your attention now to May of 2013. Did your role with the family change at that point? Yeah, so May 2013, I graduated college, and I didn't really have a job um, in place yet, and Jennifer offered me a full-time position with the kids. And what days of the week were you, well, I guess I should ask a preliminary question, which is, did you accept the job? Yes. And at that point, did you become the sole babysitter or nanny for the children? I guess I became like the main one, but there were still some people that would come in, or sometimes there would be two of us, mostly on the weekends, because um, the kids were in school, or they were like at least in preschool, so it's easier with just with one. But And what days of the week were you working for the family at this point, now that you're a full-time employee? I think it was like Monday through Saturday, so I always worked a weekend day, but it was like half a day, so I wouldn't go in until like maybe like... 11 or 12. And when you say half a day, you're referring to the weekend day? No, the weekend day was like a full day, from morning to night. So during the week while the kids were in school, I didn't have to show up like as early as I would on the weekend. And what was a typical work day for you as the nanny? Uh, well, the younger ones, it's like, you know, helping feed them or helping Jennifer if they had like certain activities that day. Um, which playing with them, keeping them busy, playing outside, giving them baths. Um, I would help with dinner, help with like cleaning up after them. During this time period, did you ever go on vacation with the family? Yes. Where did you go on vacation with the family? All the places. Yes. Uh, so I've gone to St. Bart's with them. I've been to Florida. I've been to Greece a few times. Um, I went to Virginia once with Fotis. We went to Colorado. Did both Jennifer and Mr. Dulos attend these vacations? Um, not all of them. All right. And when you say not all of them, who would not attend? Jennifer. And did Mr. Dulos ever travel without the children or Jennifer? Yeah. Can you describe the dynamic between... Mr. Dulos and his children? Yeah, I mean, when they were younger, they kind of just, 
I mean, they listened to whatever their dad said. They didn't get a lot of time with their dad, so their time was mostly on the weekend. And I was with them most of the time on the weekend. So um, they just, they did whatever photos asked them to do. Um, but yeah, that was like the main time that he spent with the kids. How often would Mr. Dulos travel without the family? A lot, where I don't know the exact days, but enough where it was, you could tell it was a little odd how often he was traveling. Could you describe the dynamic between Jennifer and the children? Yeah, it was very silly, her relationship with the kids. Um, they always wanted to be next to mommy. It was just kind of what it was. And she would sing to them and laugh at them. And she never raised her voice. So he was like so soft spoken and never got angry. And um, she was just like incredibly nurturing. What types of activities did Jennifer like to do with the children? Oh, she would take them to like, we'd go to the, like these bounce houses all the time um, with Jennifer but like around the holidays to, you know, getting the Christmas tree was a really big deal and going pumpkin picking and she'd um, draw with them, do puzzles with them. Did Jennifer like to water ski? No. You had mentioned that the children did like to water ski, however, correct? They water skied. Okay. Did, did they not like to water ski? They water skied a lot. Um, so I saw times where they didn't want to, but still had to. And as you worked full time for the Dulos family, did you begin to develop a friendship with Jennifer? Yeah. How would you describe your relationship with her? Um, I confided in her with a lot of things, like in my personal life. I just always trusted her. Um, she was someone, she was my boss, but she was someone that, you know, I always just, we just connected really well. We just worked well to, with each other. I knew what she liked, what she didn't. She knew what I was good at. It just, we had a really good relationship. Did you ever meet any of Jennifer's family? Yeah. Who have you met? Um, her mom, Gloria. Her father, Hilly, when he was alive. Um, her sister, Melissa. Um, I've met her cousins. And you mentioned your father. Has he passed away? Yeah. What year did he pass away? I think it was February of 2018, I think. And is Gloria still alive? Yeah. How old is Gloria? No, I think she's 88 or 89, but I don't want Not to get positive. that wrong. But she's, she's great. Did there come a point in time when Jennifer began fighting in you things about her relationship with the Spulos? Yeah. Jennifer ever expressed to you her feelings on whether Mr. Wills was paying enough attention to her? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Did Jennifer ever express to you a desire to avoid arguing with Mr. Wills? Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. Uh, yeah. Would you tell the jury what she said? Uh, she just felt like arguing with Fotis. Like, he was harsh and she didn't like conflict. So she could never really, like, express how she really felt because it kind of just kind of got looked over. Now, I want to direct your attention to September of 2013. Mm-hmm. Did you begin working at Fort Group? Yeah. Did Mr. Did Mr. Dulos, by the way, did he own Fort Group for the entire time that you babysat and nannied for the family? From what I knew, yeah. How did you come to begin working for Fort Group? Um, so I was working full time for the family from May of 2013 that year. And like I said, I still didn't have like a full time job the nannying was. And so he just asked if I was interested in coming into four group and, you know, having this opportunity. So I just decided to take it. And were you working full time for four group after you took the job? No, it was like half four group and half being a nanny. What type of hours were you working for four group? 
So usually I'd go in at like 8, 30, 9 o'clock in four group. And then depending on the kid's schedule, I would have to leave around 1 or 2. So they would basically like cross the door and then I was with the kids until like 9-ish, 9.30. And just to be clear, 9-ish, 9.30 at night, correct? Yeah, at night, yeah. How many days a week were you working for four group when you began being employed by Mr. Dulos? Five days, so Monday through Friday. And were you still nannying six days a week? Yeah. Did you have any regular days off? Yeah, usually at that point I was having Sundays off. Um, but if I needed like another day off, it wasn't like with Jennifer, it was kind of easy to do that. But usually Sundays were my day off at that time. What were your responsibilities before group? Um, in the beginning, it was really just like office work. I was like organizing folders, things like that. I really like worked alongside Fotis, so I basically would, I would follow him along to work sites, and he would show like um, show me some things because I was totally new to this whole world. Um, and then eventually, in time, I became in charge of the punch list at Four Group, which was um, when a house was built. The owners would have a list of things that they wanted to finish off, like there's a chip here or whatever, and I would be in charge of making sure that that gets done. How did you view Mr. Dulos when you initially began working for Four Group? Oh, I saw him as like a role model and a mentor, and I thought at the time he's giving me this really great opportunity. So I really, I considered him a friend. And did Mr. Dulos encourage you to go back to school? He did, yeah. What did he encourage you to study? Uh, construction management, but he also was pushing for me to get my real estate license. Was there a telephone number that was associated with Four Group? Yeah, it was Fotis's personal phone number. When you say his personal phone number, are we talking about a landline or a cellular phone? No, like a cellular. And did you often see Mr. Dulos answering work-related calls or sending emails? Yeah. Would it be fair to say that Mr. Dulos kept his cell phone with him at all times during your time working for Four Group? Yeah. <clears throat> When you were working for Ford Group, did Jennifer ever express to you what her intentions were with the children? Excuse me, strike that. When you were working for Ford Group, did Jennifer ever express to you um, how she wanted you to handle the summers? Uh, yeah. What, what was, did she say? Kind of said that. Well, did Jennifer ever express to you how she wanted you to handle the children during the summers? The question is, did she express to you how she wanted you to handle the children overruled? You can answer. Okay. Um, yeah, I would basically, because the kids wouldn't be in school, so I would be with the kids full time. And how many employees did Ford Group have when you began working for them? Not a lot. It was very small, so like a handful. When you say a handful, can you just be a little bit more specific for the members? Yes, I would, I guess we have to count. <laughs> I would say like five or six, maybe. Was Pavel Gumiani, Gumiani one of the employees? Yep. What was his role with him? Actually, before I ask that, when did he begin working for Four Group, to your knowledge? Oh, to my knowledge, I don't know. He was there when I started, even just babysitting before I ever even worked for four group, but I don't know when he started, but okay. and he knew the family for a while. That's all I knew. So by the time you began working for four group, he was already working for the, mm -hmm. for the four group. Is that correct? Yes. And what was his role with the company? <coughs> uh, he was a project manager. He kind of did everything, to be honest. Did Jennifer know Mr. Gumiani as well? Yep. Would he assist her around the house? Yeah. How would he assist her around the house? Uh, he would like, you know, change out the light bulbs when they went out. He would build, He, I know he built their, they had this very beautiful playscape in the backyard. I know he built that. He would even sometimes help pick us up from the airport after a trip. Did Jennifer ever work for Ford Group? Not that I know. And you'd mentioned that Mr. Dulos was a role model to you during this time. Mm -hmm. Why did you consider him to be a role model? Uh, when I first started working, he was 
just incredibly nice. He made me feel comfortable. He was funny. He, you know, I was fresh out of college. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And he, it sounded like I was getting this really great opportunity, even though it had nothing to do with any of the work I've ever done. And it seemed like he just wanted to push me and, you know, make me better. And did there come a point in time when the dynamic between Jennifer and Mr. Duros began to change from when you first met them? Yeah. Could you describe how the dynamic changed for the jury? Uh, the big dynamic change was in March of 2017, which is when Jennifer found out about his affair. And a few months after that, it, it totally changed. So I want to direct your attention now to March of 2017. Did you take a trip with the Dulos family? Yeah. And where did y'all go? Uh, the kids had a two week break. And so the first week we spent in Aspen, Colorado, and then we flew to Miami for the second week. Who went on the trip? Uh, the first week was myself, five kids, Jennifer Fotis, and his friend, Mark Massiello. And I think you already mentioned this, but why does the family decide to take a trip in March as opposed to? Oh, the kids, um, their school vacation, they get two weeks off in March. So that's why they get, we went in March. Where were the kids going to school at the time? They were going to Renbrook. It's in Farmington. I'm sorry? It's in Farmington. And when you, where in Colorado did you vacation? It was Aspen. And what types of activities did you and the children do while on the trip? Well, they ski. They're very good snow skiers. So they would ski. Um, Noel, who was younger than everyone else, we kind of would just kind of hang out, walk around the town a little bit. She would ski a little bit. Or whoever was, like, tired, they would, like, basically come back with Jennifer and I, and we would do, like, the hot cocoa stuff. And the other, But they skied a lot. And how old was Noel at this point? Uh, six, maybe? And where did you stay in Aspen? Uh, Jennifer's father won a house through a charity auction, so we stayed there for a week. And um, did there come a point in time during the trip where Mr. Bulos told the group that he had taken the children to an adult club? Yeah. Who was present for this conversation? Myself and Jennifer. How did Jennifer react upon hearing this? She like shocked because they were little and they were going to a day club. Um, and so she was like, we were both kind of like disgusted, I guess is the word. And what was Mr. Doulos' demeanor like as he was relaying this information? He was excited that he like paid off the people to let his kids into this day club where, yeah, he seemed really happy about it. And approximately how long did you guys stay in Colorado? It was about a week. And at some point did you travel to Miami? Yep. And I assume you flew? We flew, yeah. And who went to Miami? So myself, the five kids, Jennifer, Fotis, and then Jennifer's mom, Gloria, met us um, in Miami. And where did you stay in Miami initially? Initially, we stayed at the W um, Hotel there. And describe some of your daily activities in Miami. I assume you're not skiing anymore. <laughs> yeah, no snow skiing, but there was water skiing. So okay. they went from snow skiing and they went to Miami to water ski. So really, that was the activity. And where would the, where would the family ski? Uh, it's a Miami Ski Club. And who would go to the ski club? Uh, myself, the kids. Sometimes Noel would stay back with Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer would not go, and Fotis would go. And during this trip, did Jennifer discuss her relationship with Mr. Dulos with you? She did. Objection. Well, at this time, did Jennifer discuss her relationship with Mr. Dulos with you? The answer is either yes or no. Overruled. Is that a yes? Yes. 
And what did she tell you? Well, what did she tell you about the relationship? I'll rephrase. What did she tell you about the relationship? Objection. Well, that question is very broad. Oh, we'll call for an answer that could be a narrative. So the court is going to sustain the objection, but not allow, but allow you to pursue the line. You mentioned earlier that Jennifer had found out about the affair. Do you recall testifying to that? Yes. What did Jennifer say to you about the affair when you were in Miami? Objection. Well, that's going to be overruled. Me uh, she told me she believed that Fotis was having an affair. And did she say why she believed that? Uh, she just said she had this feeling he's been acting weird. And I didn't really believe her at first. And when you say you didn't really believe her, what do you mean by that? At that time, I had a good relationship with Fotis, and I believed him to be an honest guy. And I couldn't imagine him having an affair where there's five little kids involved. So what did you say to her? I said no. Objection. Ground. You're saying. But what this witness said is not hearsay. This witness is testifying about what she said, not what another declarant said. It's an out of court statement now. Well, it's an out of court statement, but this witness is the declarant. The witness is telling the jury what she told Jennifer. She has personal knowledge about what she told Jennifer. Overruled. What did you say to Jennifer? I told her I don't think that's true. What was her demeanor like during this conversation? She was very anxious, like kind of tight. Um, and she seemed upset. Was anyone else present for this conversation? Oh, yeah, her mom, Gloria. Now, during this trip, did you meet someone named Michelle Traconis? Yep. Do you see Michelle, Michelle Traconis in the courtroom? Yep. Would you just point her out and tell us what color shirt she has on? Beige. Judge, she identified the defendant. Thank you. The record will reflect. Where did well, you... before, before you proceed, you have about two minutes, perhaps, this is an appropriate point at which to conclude today because you're about to go into other matters that are more significant than just identification. So, let's see. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Um, Ms. Almeida, if I were to show you a photograph of Jennifer and another photograph of Jennifer with her children, would you recognize? individuals? Yeah. May I have these marked, Your Honor? Has counsel seen them? I yes. have, Your Honor. I'm handing you what's been pre-marked for identification as States Exhibit 15 and States Exhibit 14. I'm just going to ask that you please begin by looking at States Exhibit 14. What is that photograph of? It's of Jennifer. And approximately how old is Jennifer in that photograph? Well, it looks like she has Noel next to her, so she was maybe in her late 40s, early 50s. So, Almeida, it's difficult to hear you. Oh, so would you sorry. please keep your voice up? Yeah. Um, I would say her late 40s or early 50s. Judge, I move it in. No objection. The number again, please. States 14. States 14 admitted as a full exhibit. <laughs> now, just directing your attention to States 15. 
Can you tell the members what's depicted in stage 15? Yeah, this is a picture of Jennifer and the five kids. And how uh, old are the children in that photograph? If I had a guess, I think maybe Krishan and Constantine are six or seven, and the boys are nine or ten, and Noel three or four. And it looks like they're in a classroom. And move it in, Judge. Stage 15 admitted as a full exhibit. May I publish to the jury, Judge? Yes. Well, it's going to take a long time to do it that way, Attorney McGinnis. You should hold it up and show it to the jurors. That's fine, Judge. Thank you, sir. Publishing states 15 and 14. Where we left off yesterday, Ms. Almeida, you had indicated that you were familiar with the defendant. Is that correct? Yes. Where did you meet the defendant? Uh, in Miami at the ski club. When did you meet the defendant? Uh, March of 2017. How long after your arrival in Miami did you meet the defendant? Probably like the next day or a few days after because we went right to the ski club. And can you describe the ski club for the jury? Uh, there was like a gate that you kind of drove in and then there was everyone's boats like kind of in like a port and they would take out the boat to go into the water. And um, it was a pretty narrow like lake and basically it was used for water skiing. And there was like a little outdoor area that had a tent and a table that you could hang out in if you weren't skiing. Was it a public ski club or was it a private ski club? Private. Did Mr. Dulos own a boat? Yes. When did he purchase a boat? I'm not entirely sure the exact like month, but I think it was like uh, maybe six months to a year prior to that trip in 2017. What type of boat was it? I don't need a ski nautique. I might be getting that wrong. Uh, it was a ski. It was made for skiing. So. Where did he keep the boat? In Miami. And would he travel to Miami? Yeah, often? often. Often, yeah. And did he keep the boat at a particular place in Miami? He kept it at the ski club. When you met the defendant, was she with anyone else? Her daughter. And what's her daughter's name, if you recall? Nicole. Approximately how old was her daughter at the time? Uh, she's the boy's age. <clears throat> the boy's the 17-year-old boy's now, so... Maybe 12, probably 11, I think, around that age. Did Jennifer ever go to the ski club in Miami? No. Where would Jennifer stay if she wasn't at the ski club? Well, her mom was visiting at the time, too. So she was with her mom at the hotel or with the youngest, Noel, who would come to the ski club sometimes, but not as much as the other kids. How many times... Um, while you were in Miami during this March 2017 trip, would you say you were in the defendant's presence? A few times. Who introduced you to the defendant? Fotis. Did Mr. Dulos introduce his children to the defendant as well? Yeah, I think prior to that trip. Okay, when you say you think prior to that trip, can you explain to the jury what you mean? Yeah, so when we got there, they were calling her Mitchie. Um, and so it's, and they hugged her. So, like, they already knew her. Um, I believe it was just the two boys, so Petros and Theodore. I don't think Krishan and Constantine or Noel had met her yet. <clears throat> Would Mr. Dulos travel to Miami with the older boys, Petros and Theodore? Yeah. Prior to this trip to Miami. Yeah, prior to this trip. Can you describe your interactions with the defendant at the ski club for the jury? 
Uh, yeah, so Fotis introduced her as a friend, and she was nice. Um, she was with Fotis a lot, like they'd go on the boat to ski, but there was one time I had a conversation with her when we were underneath the little tent where you can kind of just hang out. Um, I remember the conversation. She was telling me she just got back from Colorado. Uh, she was looking at schools to go for her daughter to go to because her daughter was a um, very good snow skier, so she wanted her to, I think, get better or more opportunities there, I guess. Um, but she was friendly. When you interacted with the defendant, what language did you speak to her in? English. Did she have any trouble communicating with you in English when you spoke with her? No. Did the Dulos children interact with the defendant's daughter, Nicole? Yes. And I want to direct your attention specifically to Petros. What was inter his interaction with Nicole? It was kind of known that maybe Nicole was his girlfriend. He was 11, but in that sense. Was Jennifer ever in the defendant's presence during the Miami trip in 2017? No. Did Jennifer stay in Miami with the family for the entire trip? No, she didn't. Can you describe to the jury or explain to the jury why Jennifer did not stay in Miami for the entire trip? So her mom was with us, like I mentioned, and she tripped and she ended up breaking her ankle. So they had to fly back early um, to, so she can get it taken care of. And she took Noel with her. So they left a few days before the trip ended. Where did her mother trip? I was, I think it was by the pool. She slipped. And when you say by the pool, which pool are you referring to? Oh, the pool in Miami at the hotel. And just to remind the members of the jury, what hotel were you staying at? The W. And if we can be as precise as possible, approximately how many days were you in Miami before Jennifer left? I think it was like two or three days. So it was towards the end of the trip. And after Jennifer left Miami, who stayed behind? I stayed with Fotis and the other four kids. Did you guys ever go to the ski club again? Yeah. And was the defendant present? Yeah. Did there come a point in time when you were no longer staying at the W? Uh, yeah. Can you tell the jury what happened? Uh, there was one night where um, Fotis said that we had to stay in a different hotel, and so we drove to um, the Ritz-Carlton, and but it was only gonna be me and the four kids, and so, because he was gonna stay with a friend, and he didn't really go into specifics. It was just kind of odd, but I disagreed. And so it was the four kids and myself, and we stayed in one room together um, for that one night. And then we had to get up at like 5 a.m. to get an Uber to meet him at the another ski club. And when you say all of you stayed in one room, how many beds were in this room? One bed. Where did everyone sleep? We squished <laughs> on, the, on the bed. I think I was with the Krishan and Constantine in the bigger bed. And uh, Theodore was probably sleeping. We had a cot and then maybe someone on the floor. When Jennifer was in Miami, were you all sharing a room like this? No. What were the living room? What were the arrangements when Jennifer was in Miami? Objection relevance. Well, the court does not know if this is preliminary to a more material matter. The court will overrule the objection. What were the arrangements prior to Jennifer leaving Miami? Uh, we had more of like a suite room, so there was multiple bedrooms, so that way there was more space for us to be. And like a living, a common living space and a kitchen space also. <clears throat> Did you ever see the defendant outside of the Miami Ski Club? Yes. Where did you see her? Uh, we went to laser tag one day. Approximately what time did you go to laser tag? It was after the ski club, so it was probably like later afternoon into the evening. And what type of facility was this? It was like one of those places that had an arcade and uh, 
pizza and laser tag. I don't remember, I don't remember the name. When you got to the um, facility, can you describe to the jury what happened? Uh, yeah, so I went in and I just kind of went right to the register to like pay for everyone. And photos kind of ran in after and he's like, no, 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 you can't like, he, he wanted to like make sure that he was the one paying. It was just kind of odd or have Michelle pay. It was very, just a weird interaction. And I just told him, I just don't, I don't want to do laser tag because I was tired and I didn't want to play laser tag. And laser tag with that many kids is very tiring. Um, but he really pushing me to play laser tag, which was just kind of weird. So I ended up having to play laser tag while Michelle and Fotis hung out outside of the, the laser tag room. And I just want to be clear about this. When you say he was pushing you to play laser tag, who are you referring to? Fotis. And where you indicated that they did not play laser tag, they being the defendant and Ms. Dulos. Yeah. Where did they stay while you were playing laser tag? Well, because it was like that arcade kind of space, there were tables and stuff that you can kind of hang out on while the kids were in laser tag. Was anyone else um, present besides you, the children, Mr. Dulos and Michelle Traconis? I think Nicole was there also. And did she play laser tag? Yeah. You indicated earlier that Mr. Dulos did not spend the night with you um, at the hotel when you were with the children uh, after Jennifer had left. Is that correct? Yes. Did Mr. Dulos strike that? Where did you end up meeting with Mr. Dulos after spending the night at the hotel with the children? We went to a different ski club um, in Boca. Um, so we took an Uber there to meet him there in the morning. And was the defendant present at that ski club? No. When did you leave Miami? Uh, shortly after that. We took like an evening flight because we got in around 11 and we weren't back to their house in Farmington until about midnight. Who was on the flight with you? Uh, myself and the four kids. Mr. Dulos did not travel back with the family? No, he extended his trip. How did you get back from the airport, airport to, I assume, Fort Jefferson Crossing? Oh, we took an Uber. And what time did you arrive? Around midnight. When you arrived, what did the children do? Oh, they were all tired, so they like ran upstairs and like got into bed. So, do you recall what day of the week this was? I don't. Was Jennifer awake? Yeah, she greeted us. And did you speak with Jennifer? I did. Did you spend the night at the home that night? I uh, no, I went back to my home. Did Jennifer discuss with you a belief she had about Mr. Dulos? Yes. What did she say to you? She told me he is having an affair and I have proof. What was her proof? Um, I think through email and receipts, she found out that he went on a trip to Utah with Michelle and a friend of his and his girlfriend. What was her demeanor like as she said this? She was, I think she just was just like, I knew it. And she, she's again, very soft spoken. So. She seemed sad, but also just kind of like she was trying to figure out what to do. Did she indicate to you whether or not she was going to be confronting Mr. Willis about the affair? She told me that she was going to talk to him about it, and she asked if I not mentioned anything. Well, the court's concern is his relevance. So this appears just to be a series of events that, of course, the jury is hearing this testimony, but it just appears to be a series of events. And 
the court is going to keep a short leash on this chronology because it has to lead somewhere. So the objection is overruled as far as hearsay is concerned. The court's concern is relevant. Overruled. You can answer the question. Can you repeat the question? I will try. <laughs> uh, did she indicate to you whether or not she planned to confront Mr. Dulles about the affair? Oh, yeah. She asked me, um, well, she told me that she was going to, and she asked me not to mention anything to him or to anyone. And did you eventually speak with Jennifer about her intentions regarding the future of their marriage? Not that night, no. When did you? Uh, it kind of changed throughout time what her intentions were. Okay. Can you describe to the jury what you mean by that? Um, so I was in the house the next day and when Fotis arrived too. And so when I got to the house, she pulled me aside and told me that she spoke to Fotis and he admitted to the affair and that she was going to try and have this be as civil as possible because she opened up more saying that she was no longer in love with Fotis, but she wanted, she had five kids. So they were going to try and work out what they could. And directing your attention now to April, 2017, did Jennifer make any requests of you as to whether or not you would stay on as the nanny? Yeah. Over the next few weeks, um, <coughs> things were changing. And so her plan changed, and she asked me um, to go with her when she was planning to move, and I agreed. Where did this conversation take place? At a coffee shop in Avon, which is the town right next to Farmington. Were you still employed by Four Group at this time? Yes. Why did you decide to go with her? Um, because she was my friend and I trusted her um, and I wanted to help her. Did you ever talk to Mr. Dulles about your future with 4Group? Yeah, at that time, um, I've been working for 4Group for a few years and I just had no interest in it at all. And so I didn't see a future with 4Group anymore. Did you give your notice? I did. It was going to be for the end of May. I want to direct your attention now to April and May of 2017. Was Jennifer still living at Fort Jefferson Crossing? Yes. Was Mr. Dulo still living at Fort Jefferson Crossing? Yes. Were they still sleeping in the same bedroom? No. Where were they sleeping? Uh, Jennifer was in their master bedroom, and they had a third floor um, office, but also bedroom, and so Fotis was up there. Can you describe the dynamic between Mr. Dulles and Jennifer in April of 2017? Uh, it started to become very tense and uncomfortable being in the presence of both of them. Um, they were arguing a lot. It was, again, but just very uncomfortable. Were you still working for for a group at this time? I was. You had mentioned that you witnessed arguments between Mr. Dubos and Jennifer. Yes. I want to direct your attention now to an argument that involved a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Can you describe for the jury what you saw between Jennifer and Mr. Dulos and their interaction? Objection, Your Honor. Prior bad acts, relevance as to Michelle Traconis. Well, can you describe what you saw? Well, we don't know what the testimony is going to be. So the jury has heard testimony that there was a lot of arguing. That's not at the level of a prior bad act. We do not know what this testimony will be. 
The question is, can you describe what you saw? Overruled. You may answer the question. Uh, so one day I was, I drove their family car often. It was a Suburban and I was driving through their garage. Um, there's kind of this like little, I don't know, I guess like a bridge. There's a garage and a garage and then you drive through. And so I was driving through and pulling into the garage. And as I was doing that in their backyard patio, I saw Fotis kind of chasing Jennifer with this piece of paper. Objection, Your Honor. Ground. Same grounds, Your Honor. Prior bad acts related to Fotis Dula's relevance as to Michelle Traconis. Well, the grounds has to be... You're stating two grounds. You're stating prior bad acts, and you're stating relevance. Yes, Your Honor. Overruled on relevance. Concerning prior bad acts, counsel, do you wish to be heard? Well, Judge, I would just indicate that um, I, mean, I can do the proffer now if the court wants, or we can do it at sidebar. Um, well, prior bad acts are not admissible to prove action and conformity therewith on a particular occasion. Absolutely. And that's, I, I will tell the court that that's not the offer from the state. Obviously, you know, everything that we are about to discuss as part of the offer yesterday goes to the tension in their marriage during that time period. So that's that's the purpose of this offer. Do you wish to be heard, counsel? Your Honor, this was heard outside the presence of the jury, and this is one of the um, things that we discussed and my objections based on that. Well, of course, prior bad acts are not admissible to show bad character, criminal tendencies, or propensity, but they are admissible to show other things. And so what are you offering it to show, counsel? Your Honor, we're offering it to show Mr. Doulos's um, animus, the growing tension in their uh, marriage, and um, what his intent and motivation was in this particular case. So intent and malice are grounds on which prior bad acts can be admitted, unless the probative value is outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice. What is your argument, counsel, on unfair prejudice? <laughs> your Honor, these incidents uh, that are going to be described and that are being described right now involve a very short period of time in 2017. The incident for which we are here today is one that is alleged to have occurred in 2019. The incidents that are being discussed here today involve marital discord, involving uh, yelling and disagreements in the context of an impending dissolution of marriage. Uh, the charges for which are being brought today involve a conspiracy murder. So, in other words, your, your argument, counsel, it appears to the court is that these in incidents are too remote in time to essentially give life to intent and malice. And not similar in nature, Your Honor. Well, at this point, uh, the testimony is that Fotis was chasing around Jennifer with a piece of paper. So, the description of that act as a prior bad act is not evident to the court. Cross-examination is available on what chasing around me. So it's overruled. Thank you. Um, I don't remember the exact question, but we were discussing an incident that you observed between <coughs> Mr. Beals and Jennifer involving a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Can you just describe to the jury what you saw? So after I pulled into the garage, they saw me pull in and they both went inside. And so um, I had some of the kids in the car. I don't remember where we were coming back from, but we walked in through the garage to the mud room, to the kitchen. And um, I just kind of like focused on the kids, getting them to where they needed to be. And it was later on that Jennifer told me Objection what Fotis was saying. Side. Well, it was later on that Jennifer and then the court did not hear the balance of the told me your honor. testimony so if 
the objection is, well, first the objection has to be timely. If it's not timely, you have to move the strike. So Your Honor, I heard Jennifer told me it's a hearsay objection. So if I may, Judge, no, you object to the question, not the response. You can have the response stricken. What's the question, John? Well, the question was for her to describe what she had seen. I'm not claiming what counsel's objecting to, so perhaps I could just ask another question. We can move this objection out. Like so the last sentence, Jennifer told me, that's non-responsive to the question. So if the objection is essentially it moves into an area that's not responsive, the court will strike that answer. Thank you. Don't tell me what Jennifer said to you about the interaction. I okay. want you, though, to describe Jennifer's demeanor as you saw her being chased with a piece of paper. Uh, she looks scared and worried. And can you describe Mr. Dulos's demeanor for the jury during that same interaction? He looked angry. Did you ever witness Mr. Dulos make any threats about the children? Yeah. And did he make these threats in Jennifer's presence? Yes. What type of threat did he make to Jennifer? That he would take the kids to Greece and not come back. And did Jennifer ever express her fear to you that that would happen? Uh, yeah, a lot. When was this threat made? Uh, through those couple months, so April, May 2017. Did there come a time when Jennifer made a decision to leave for Jefferson Crossing? Yes. Did she ask for your help in doing so? Yes. Can you describe for the jury what you did for Jennifer? Uh, we were slowly moving things out of her Fort Jefferson house to a property that her parents owned in Pound Ridge, New York, and to a friend's house in Farmington. Things that Fotis wouldn't really notice being gone. Did she tell you why she believed she needed to secretly move out of the house? Yes. Oh, did she tell you? In other words, it calls for what Jennifer told her. I the answer is yes or no. It's the next question that may run into the objection. Did she tell you why she believed she needed to secretly move out of the house? Yes. What? Objection, Your Honor. Because the question is probably, what did she tell you? Objection is hearsay. Counsel. Yes, Your Honor. This is a statement of um, an existing belief under 8.3, subsection 4, and I do claim this. Well, a statement of belief is not the same as a statement of then existing mental or emotional condition. If I can be more specific, Your Honor, it's a statement of fear, which I think undoubtedly meets the hearsay exception. So if the testimony is she was afraid, if that's the testimony, uh, what's your response? Afraid of quote of doulos. What's your response? Speculation, Your Honor. The objections overruled. What did she tell you about why she felt she needed to secretly move out of the house? Because she was afraid of what Fotis would do to her or with the kids if she filed for divorce while he was while they were living under the same roof. During this time period where Jennifer was moving out of the home secretly, can you describe her emotional state for the jury? At first, she was really calm. So when she first found out about the affair, she was calm and she really wanted to try and make it work, which I thought was really good of her because I wouldn't have been that calm. But she was very calm. 
But then over the weeks from after we got back from that spring break until we left in June, um, she was increasingly getting more afraid. Like her anxiety was really bad. Um, you could tell that she lost weight. Like she was just afraid and expressed that a lot. And did there actually come a point in time when Jennifer was involved in a car accident? Yes. How did you become aware of the car accident? Jennifer called me because she was in Pound Ridge where she was bringing stuff to the house um, that she was moving from Fort Jefferson. And she called me to tell me about the accident because she needed someone to come pick her up. And she didn't want Fotis to know because she didn't want Fotis to know that she was moving things into another house. Describe her demeanor when you picked her up. Like terrified, like shaking, like he's going to find out. She was really worried. I want to direct your attention now to May 2017. Uh, did there come a point in time when Mr. Dulos had family members visit Fort Jefferson Crossing? Yes. Who visited Fort Jefferson Crossing? It was his niece, Clea, and her, um, I don't know if it was her boyfriend or fiance at the time, Nacho. And where were they from? Uh, they were living in Madrid. You said Madrid? I believe, yeah, it was Spain, I think. And while they were visiting, did you witness another argument between Mr. Dulos and Jennifer? Yes. Can you describe to the jury what happened? Yeah. Um, I was in one of the kids' rooms. You're on your same grounds. Oh. Can you describe what happened? Uh, not a hearsay objection overruled. So I was in one of the kids' rooms, and we were just doing a puzzle together where all of a sudden, like, we started to hear screaming, and Jennifer ran through the bedroom door. I don't believe that she knew that we were in there, but she ran through the door. Fotis was yelling. I'm not sure what he was yelling. And she closed the door behind her and pushed her body up against the door, and he was trying to get in. And, she, I mean, her face was just, she was terrified. And she saw that myself and her daughter were there. And to be honest, I kind of froze because I didn't know what to do. And then when he pushed the door more, he saw that his daughter and myself were in there and his demeanor totally changed. He went from yelling to like, Jennifer, I just want to talk, like very soft-spoken. It was so weird. And so eventually he walked away because myself and her daughter were there. She told me she needed to get out of the house. And so she left me with the kids and she just got in the car and I think she just went down the street to really just like kind of catch her breath. What we'll do at this point, uh, because we started late with uh, the jury, we will take our morning recess and come back in at uh, 1140. Please do not discuss the case. All rise. This honorable superior court now stands in recess. You may exit the courtroom. Good morning again. Good morning. May I proceed, Your Honor? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Almeida, you had indicated that you had driven the family's um, Chevy Suburban, is that right? Yes. How many vehicles did the Dulos family have in the spring of 2017? So they had the Chevy Suburban, uh, Fotis had a Porsche Cayenne, Jennifer had a Range Rover, and they had a Jeep, but I don't know if that was in the, it was a Florida car. I don't know if it came to Farmington yet or not at that time. I want to direct your attention now to the Porsche Cayenne, if I could. Uh, first of all, what type of uh, vehicle is that? It's like a small SUV, I guess. And did you ever witness an argument between Jennifer and Mr. Dulos over the Porsche Cayenne? Yes. Can you describe that argument for the jury? Yep. Objection, Your Honor. Well, 
the question is, can you describe the argument over the force tie-in? What's the relevance, Counselor? So the uh, relevance, Your Honor, is that once again, this goes to the antagonistic relationship that was developing between Mr. Dulos and Jennifer Dulos during those spring months of 2017. And um, specifically that this particular incident um, involved the um, Dulos children and the fact that Jennifer became greatly upset based on something that Mr. Dulos was doing. Well, if this is a testimony about what happened in 2017, every incident that occurred during the course of a strained marriage is cumulative. So at this point, the court is going to sustain the objection. I want to um, direct your attention now to June 19, 2017. Can you tell the jury what happened that day? That was the day that Jennifer planned for us to leave Fort Jefferson. When you say Jennifer planned for us to leave Fort Jefferson, who are you referring to? <clears throat> um, the five kids, Jennifer and I was helping her along. Was Mr. Dulos aware that you were going to be leaving Fort Jefferson? No. What was the plan to leave Fort Jefferson without Mr. Dulos becoming aware? The plan was she told him that we were all going to be visiting her father's grave and we were going to New York. Uh, we went to New York often because that's where Jennifer's parents were. And uh, we left like that afternoon, I believe. Um, and we just got in the car and the plan was to stay at a hotel that we've never stayed in before. So we stayed at the Mandarin Oriental in the city. And the, Jennifer hired an armed bodyguard to be outside of her room because she was afraid because her plan was to file for divorce once we were in the city in the hotel. Did you ever hear from Mr. Dulos on June 19, 2017? Yes. How did you hear from him? He um, called me a bunch that evening. Did you ever answer the phone? No, I didn't. Did he leave any voicemails? Yes. What did he say on the voicemail? Uh, he accused me of kidnapping their kids and um, that he was going to call the police, which he did. And how long did you stay at the hotel? Um, I stayed for like half a week, but they stayed for a full week. Where did Jennifer end up residing after leaving Fort Jefferson Crossing? Uh, she rented a home in New Canaan, Connecticut. What was the address, if you recall? 153 Chichester Road, I believe. So not 69 Wells Lane initially? No. No. Directing your attention now to approximately eight days later, was there a family case pending between Mr. Dulos and Jennifer at that point? Yeah. And did you testify in the family case? Yes, I did. Was that in this building? Yes. Did you see Mr. Dulos in this building prior to testifying? Yes, outside in the hallway. Was he with anyone? He was with his lawyers. Did he approach you? Yes. Can you describe his demeanor as he approached you? Uh, he came at me yelling at me, again accusing me of kidnapping his kids. Um, and then I just walked away. And then he tried to approach me later with his lawyer in a different demeanor, just apologizing, you know, saying that he's just really upset. But I still can't. I just walked away. And did you testify on Jennifer's behalf in the custody case? Yes. 
going forward from June 27th, 2019, did you continue to work as a nanny for Jennifer? Yes. Well, Council, you said June 27th, 2019. Sorry, strike that. Let me rephrase the question. June 27th, 2017, did you continue to work as a nanny for Jennifer? Yes. And were you still working for four group? No. Did your responsibilities change with the kids given the new location? I uh, yes. I think I became more it was only myself and Jennifer. Um, so there was no other babysitters or anything. Other than she met some people at, in her time in New Canaan, so there'd be a babysitter on a day I couldn't go or she needed an extra hand, but it was mostly just Jennifer and I, so my responsibility like responsibilities became more. And were you ever tasked with the responsibility of dropping the children off at Fort Jefferson Crossing for visitation with Mr. Dulos? Yes, I was in the beginning. Approximately for how long were you tasked with that responsibility? Uh, just a few times, and I told Jennifer that I no longer wanted to do it. I want to direct your attention now to September 20th, 2017. Did you drop the children off at Fort Jefferson Crossing that day? Yes. Did you see Mr. Dulos on that day? Yes. Did Mr. Dulos approach you on that day? Yes. Can you describe his demeanor when he approached you? He was angry and yelled at me and again is accusing me of kidnapping his kids and telling me that the only reason why I was there for Jennifer was because she paid off my student loan, which is an absolute lie, and that he was going to make sure that I never see his kids again, but yelling in front of the kids. So it was very uncomfortable. Did you ever do a drop off with the children again? After that time, uh, no. I told her I no longer wanted to be around him. Did Jennifer and Mr. Dulos ever officially finalize their divorce? No, they did not. Was their divorce ongoing in May of 2019? Yes. In May of 2019, how often was Mr. Dulos permitted to see his children? Uh, he was he had supervised visitations, so he had to have someone from the court along with his visitations, which was every Wednesday for a few hours. And with that visitation, it needed to be agreed upon with the supervisor and Jennifer through something I believe was called the Family Wizard um, for them to communicate because they no longer could communicate through text or through phone. Um, everything needed to be recorded. So it was supervised visitations once a week. I want to direct your attention now to the week of May 20th, 2019. Mm -hmm. Were you working as a nanny for Jennifer during that week? Yes. And I want to begin with May 21st, Tuesday, 2019. Okay. Where were Jennifer and the children living at that point? So they now have moved to 69 Wells Lane in New Canaan. Did Jennifer own that home? No, she was renting. In addition to yourself as the nanny, were there any other individuals who were frequently in the home besides the family itself? Uh, there was a cleaning person that would come often. Her name was Edie. I don't know if it was like once or twice a week. And how often were you working for Jennifer in May of 2019? Um, so the weekends were less, but it was usually Monday through Thursday and Sunday most of the time. Um, but I would always have Friday and Saturdays off. Had you had any contact with Mr. Dulos from September 2017 until May of 2019? He was emailing me um, back and forth. Um, but other than that? Other than that, no, no contact. How did you typically get into the house at 69 Wells Lane? 
So they had a three car um, garage and I would enter through the middle because they had a keypad and that's what the keypad would open. And I would enter through the garage and then there was a door that led to the mudroom and that's how I would get in the house. What types of vehicles did Jennifer own? So she had a Suburban and she had a Range Rover. <clears throat> Where would she typically keep the Suburban and the Range Rover? So the Suburban was on the left side of the garage and in the middle was the Range Rover. And then the third and last bay was, we had a bunch of shelves for sporting equipment and the garbage can. So that was typically left open. Are you familiar with something known as WeatherTech lining? I think that's like a Suburban or a line your cars with. Maybe not, I don't know. Is, I think somebody, yes. <laughs> well, let me ask it this way. Did Jennifer have lining in her Suburban? Yes. Where, did, where was the lining? It was in the car, so it was like the mats and then the trunk because the kids would throw their sports stuff in there all the time. So it was like, I think a way to protect the car. And had you actually seen the lining in the trunk of the Suburban? Yeah, it never, like, it never came out of the car unless she brought it to a car wash and they took it out to clean it, but they always put it back in. What type of material was this made out of? Like rubber. When you would enter through the garage, you indicated that you access a mudroom, is that correct? Yes. Was the door to the mudroom ever locked? Uh, no, that was kept open. When would it be locked? The door leading into the garage? Yes. That door was never really kept locked. It was kind of just open. Now, I want to direct your attention to that day, Tuesday, May 21st, 2019. Um, was there a, a basketball hoop being installed at the residence? Yeah, so the boys got a basketball hoop as a gift from her, their grandmother. So they were getting it installed in their driveway. It was one that you had to dig a hole for and put it in that way. And did you, um, were you present when that was taking place, the basketball hoop being built? No, I showed up after. So it happened earlier that morning. Did you have a conversation with Jennifer about the garage that day? Yeah, so she went to show me the basketball hoop because she was like really proud of it. So we were on our way outside and just in passing, she's like, this is a mess. Well, the hearsay came in at the end of the question. What is the question? Whether or not she had a conversation with Jennifer about the garage. Okay, so the answer was yes. And then the response was she said hearsay. Well, my, my response, Your Honor, is that I'm not offering this for the truth of the matter asserted, and so I'm not offering it for a hearsay purpose. It's meant to explain why this witness took subsequent action in the garage. The council approach, please. <coughs> What did Jennifer say about the garage? She said the garage was a mess, and that was it. So I decided to clean it that day. What area of the garage did you clean? I cleaned that third open bay that had all their sports equipment in it. And how did you clean the area? I guess it was just more like organizing the shelves and organizing what was on the floor and just putting things in certain spots. Were there any cleaning supplies in the garage? Yeah, there was a bucket of cleaning supplies. What color was the bucket? 
To be honest, I don't remember. I believe it to be white or red. Can you describe the bucket for the jury? I mean, is it a, one of these five gallon buckets or? Yeah, it was one like, I guess it's five gallon. I don't know, but it would just have things like Windex and cleaning solutions, sponges, things like that, that the cleaner would use like grab on into um, when she would enter the house to clean the rest of the house. And while you were cleaning the garage, did you notice any camping pillows? Yeah, so the kids would go on a day-night trip um, with their school where they had to bring camping supplies, like a camping pillow and sleeping bag. So I kind of put that in the corner. That it just kind of lived in the garage. So the camping pillows were in the garage? Yes. Now I want to... Um direct your attention now to the next day, Wednesday, May 22nd, 2019. Were you working that day? Yes. And what time did you arrive at work? I usually ar arrive around 12-ish. It, it depends. Sometimes I come in earlier. Do you remember what you did upon your arrival at work that day? On Wednesday? Um, well, Jennifer, there was a visitation that day, so I usually go to the house first and kind of like pick up after the kids or their rooms and stuff. So probably like made the beds. Yeah. You mentioned that there was a visitation that day. Who had visitation? Uh, photos had visitation. And what time would um, photos arrive for visitation? Uh, 4.30. And what time did he arrive on this day? This day he arrived at 4. Was this unusual? Unbelievably unusual. Fotis was notoriously late to everything, including supervised visitation. Did you see him arrive at the house? I didn't see him arrive at the house until Jennifer noticed him through the window because he pulled in up the driveway and part of their agreement was that he had to wait at the bottom of the driveway for the supervisor to arrive and then together they would drive up the driveway and get the kids for the supervised visit. So it was strange that he drove his car all the way up the driveway with nobody noticing. Um, so Jennifer saw that he came, came down and got me and said, I'm, she just said, I'm gonna go talk to him and see what's going on. And he said he was confused. And so he just went back down the driveway and waited for the supervisor to arrive. Now, at some point, did you leave Fort Jeffrey, excuse me, did you leave 69 Wells Lane? Yeah. Why did you leave 69 Wells Lane? I didn't want to be around Fotis. So what did you do? Um, I went into town with one of the kids. I think we grabbed lunch. I believe she had, um, they did horseback riding. And so we were going to that right after. So we just grabbed something to eat. And then I took her to where she needed to be. And how long did that last where you took her out on to, uh, what was it again? I think it was horseback riding. Okay. Yeah, how long did that last? It's usually, like a, I believe it was like an hour and a half or so. And at some point, did you um, message with Jennifer? Yes. And what was the purpose of messaging with Jennifer? I wanted to make sure that Fotis left the house before I came back. So she was just letting me know if he'd left or not. If I can have this marked, Your This has been uh, marked by Madam Clerk as State's Exhibit 16. I did have an opportunity to show Attorney Belson what was on State 16 yesterday. I don't know if there's any objection. There. State 16 will be admitted as a full exhibit. <clears throat> State 
So Amanda, there is a gigantic TV behind you um, yep. that we're going to turn on and we're going to show you some things. Okay. Is your honors TV on? Yes. So within State's Exhibit 16, there is a file entitled Number One Text with Jennifer. I'm just going to ask if my colleague can pull that up. And we're displaying page one of Text with Jennifer at this point. Ms. Almeida, do you recognize this text message exchange? Yeah. From, well, firstly, can you just. Explain to the jury what this is. Uh, these are texts between Jennifer and I that Wednesday, um, going back and forth on uh, what to do that evening of Wednesday. Because I was just checking in to see if Otis was there and how I could essentially waste time if he was still there, so I didn't have to be at the house. And were these screenshots that were taken from your cellular phone at the time? Yes. And did you provide those screenshots to police? Yes. And many of us have iPhones, but just for the record, is this an iPhone text message exchange? Yeah, so I was in the blue and Jennifer was in the, the white. And so Jennifer writes, Fotis is still here. I know you're going to do New Orleans braids. Petros is picked up by 8.30. I think he should wrap it up, dot, dot, dot. I'll let you know when he goes. And, and Jennifer wrote that to you? Yes. And what is the message about Noelle's braids and Petros being picked up? Can you explain to the jury what she meant by that? Yeah, Noelle had a, I think she had like a colony day or something at school. So she had a little outfit and she had a dress and she just wanted to wear braids. And Jennifer had many talents, but hair was not one of them. So I did her hair uh, the night before. And Petros was at lacrosse. So it was a practice to get picked up from. And you um, write, I'll just go out in gas to waste some time. Yeah. And uh, and you continue, Constantine wants Duncan. I assume that means Dunkin' Donuts? Yes, that does. Um, so maybe we do that, get gas, and then get Petros. And then she replies, okay, great. But he left so you can bring him home. Is that right? Yep. So she was letting you know that it was okay to return? Yes. Now, did there um, come a point in time I, where Fotis um, actually returned to 69 Wells Lane on May 22nd? Was that that Wednesday? Yes. Um, yes, actually, in between his visit or during his visit. Yes. Okay. And um, were these text messages before or after he returned? Um, I think it was after. I'd have to look at the time, but I believe it was after. Okay. Did there come a point in time where Mr. Dulos um, ate dinner on the back patio of 69 Wells Lane? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Wow. Personal knowledge. Well, we do not know if this witness was there. So that predicate question can be asked. Well, let me ask it this way. Did you did you become aware that Mr. Dulos was going to be returning to 69 Wells Lane to have dinner? Yes. How did you become aware of that? Because uh, Jennifer talked about it. Same objection here. Well, well, did you become aware that Mr. Dulos was going to go back to 69 Wells Lane to have dinner? Response, yes. How did you become aware of that because Jennifer told you? I'm sorry, Ms. Nicole. Because Jennifer told her. Yes. And the objection is essentially hearsay. Yes, sir. Overruled. Um, Jennifer told you this in person? Yes. And when would she have told you this in person? Was it after you had taken Noel or? 
Yeah, it was when I, so I dropped Noel off. And then by that time he had left with the kids. And so I went back to the house and I was then taking Constantine to his lacrosse practice. So it was in between that time before I left with Constantine or to go, yeah, to his practice. Did you and Jennifer do anything to prepare for Mr. Dulos's visit? Yes. What did you do? We locked all the doors. Why did you lock the doors? Because she did not want him entering the house at all. And in, in their living room at 69 Wells, it was all opened windows with um, doors. And so you could enter. And so we made sure all of those, including the mudroom door, was all locked. And after you assisted her in locking the doors, what did you do next? She, um, we were preparing the food that was going to be eaten on the patio. That way they didn't need anything coming in. So they had all the cups, utensils, napkins, plates, everything was out there on the patio. The food as well, or that came later? No, the food as well, because he came with the food and gave it to Jennifer. And so she had it in the fridge. So we just put it out. Now, I want to uh, direct your attention now to May 23rd, 2019, which is the next day. Mm -hmm. Did you work that day? Yes. What types of things did you do at work that day? I don't remember exactly, but I'm sure the kids had practice or horseback riding or something. I usually pick the kids up from school, um, or I'll pick Noel and the other four kids, they had different times in which they were out of school. So I would usually hang, or Jennifer would hang out with Noel until the other kids were picked up. And um, I would also uh, cook dinner. And I did like tidying when the cleaner wasn't there. I did the tidying around the house. So let me sharpen my question a little bit. Did you do something with paper towels? Yes. Okay. Can you tell the jury what you did with the paper towels? Yeah, so we buy in bulk. And so we um, were running out of paper towels that we keep in the pantry. And so I went down in the basement to get a 12 pack of paper towels and I unloaded it in the pantry before I left that evening. Where was the pantry located at 69 Wells Lane? It was to the left of the kitchen. And did you have any conversations with Jennifer about what she would be doing the next day? Yes. Were you going to be working that Friday? Uh, yes. And specifically Friday, May 24th, 2019. Yes. Why were you going to be working that Friday if you didn't ordinarily work on Fridays? So she asked me um, originally to maybe stay over on Thursday night because she had appointments in New York City to go to. Um, she still kept her doctors here and she had an early morning appointment on Friday. And so doing overnights was something that I would often do. It wasn't abnormal. And so the plan was for me to spend the night Thursday and then um, be there Friday. And I was going to take four of the kids and drive them up to New York to meet Jennifer at her mom's because they had an orthodontist appointment that was also located in the city. When you say the city, you're referring to, to New York City. Manhattan. Yeah, Manhattan. And where did the children attend school? A New Canaan Country Day. And you may have said this, I apologize, but what time were you supposed to be picking them up on Friday, May 24th? So on Friday, I was picking them up um, like 12, 15, 12, 30. They had a half day that day, which they usually don't. It's usually they have half days, but it's on Wednesdays. But that day, it was on a Friday. On May 23rd, did Jennifer tell you which vehicle she planned to take to the city the next day? Yeah, so ultimately she decided that um, she was just going to spend the night Thursday, so I didn't need to sleep over. And she told me she was going to take the Range Rover because she'd only have four of the kids, and the Suburban is very difficult to park in Manhattan. What time did you leave on May 23rd? So I picked them up and we came back to the house to have Subway sandwiches that I bought them. And I think... I'm sorry, on May 23rd. Oh, May 23rd, sorry. Um, I left my usual time, probably like around 9-ish. Directing your attention now to Friday, May 24th, 2019. Did you receive any text messages from Jennifer's phone on the morning of May 24th? Yeah. I'm just going to ask that we call them. Thank <laughs> you.
And actually, I'm just going to uh, this left. Just before we get to there, I want to just button up. Okay, can you, can you, those are difficult to read. Um, this is where we, I think, left off. If we can just continue on to the next page. This is page two of folder one, text message for Jennifer. So this is uh, now page two. Um, and directing your attention to Wednesday, May 22nd, at approximately 4.59 PM, um, you indicated OK to come back. She responds, yes, we'll be back about 6.15, 6.20. I'll explain. And you responded, OK. Was that um, in between when you took Noel and then returned to take Constantine to practice? Uh, yes. <laughs> Now, directing your attention to page three, you had indicated to the jury that you had received text messages from Jennifer's phone in the morning. And I want to just direct you to the top, Friday, May 24th at 7.14 a.m. Can you just indicate to the jury what she wrote to you? Yeah, she said, I took Instagram off so you could use it for a car ride. Petra says, I've had it in my bathroom. Petros is bringing Laxic. He has to bring home. Okay. And so, first of all, um, just for the record, what is Instagram? Well, it's a social media app. Okay. And who had Instagram? Petros had it when he was not allowed to have it because he downloaded it. Okay. And so when she's saying, I took Instagram off, she's referring to some tablet or computer that yes. Petros had? Yes. Okay. And she's indicating he's allowed to have it now? Yes. Okay. And what does this mean? Petros is bringing lax sticks he has to bring home. Yeah, so Petros played lacrosse, so he was bringing the lacrosse stick to school because I think he was playing after school. <clears throat> so um, you received these messages in the morning. Mm -hmm. What time did you arrive at... 69 Wells Lane that day? I got there, I think it was close to 11. When you say 11 in the morning? 11 in the morning, yeah. How did you get there? I drove my car. Did you make any stops prior to getting to 69 Wells Lane? Yes. Where did you stop? I stopped at the restaurant chain Subway to get sandwiches for everybody. And when you got to 69 Wells Lane, how did you enter the home? Like I always do. So I typed in the code to the middle garage and went through the middle bay. And then through the mudroom door? Yes, and through the mudroom door. Did you notice anything unusual when you went into the garage? When I went into the garage, yes. Um, the Range Rover was still there and the Suburban was gone when she told me she would be taking the Range Rover. Did you see any blood-like substances in the garage or on the floor? No. After you walked in the garage, where did you go? So I enter through the mudroom and I usually put my stuff. She had these cubbies and I put my stuff in the cubby and then I go to the kitchen. So I went in the kitchen. When you got to the kitchen, did you notice anything unusual? A couple things, yes. Tell the jury what you noticed. So first her purse was on um, the floor. It was between the mudroom and the kitchen, like the doorway. It was a big, like, structured purse. And I thought it was just a little odd because it was a really nice handbag and it was on the floor. But I didn't look in the bag, so I just kind of figured she took her phone and her um, wallet with her to New York. And then when I entered the kitchen, her she always had a tea, like, in a certain cup with her and a granola bar. And she ate it every morning. It was just part of her routine, and it was there... The tea was still full, and the granola bar was still there. So I thought it was a little strange, but I just figured she was in a rush because I knew she had to get to the city. So I just cleaned the cup of tea, and I put the granola bar away. Mm -hmm. 
As you were cleaning the cup of tea, did you notice the paper towel roll on the countertop near the sink? Yeah, so the paper towel roll was empty, so I went in the pantry to go grab another one and noticed that there were only two rolls of paper towels left, which was odd to me because I the night before I just put 12 rolls in there. Um, but again, I was, thought maybe the kids spilled something and they used a lot of paper towels. Did you do anything else when you were inside the house? Yeah, so usually I would go in and I would go in the kids' room and like fix up their beds or put away some clothes. Um, and then after I left to pick the kids up from school. What time did you pick the children up from school? I think it was around 1230. <laughs> I'm sorry? Like 1230. And where did you pick them up? A New Canaan Country Day. Which children did you pick up from school? I picked up Petros, Theodore, Constantine, and Noel um, because Christian was going to go home on the bus with a friend and spend the afternoon there because she didn't need to go to the orthodontist. Where did you take the children once you picked them up? So we went back to 69 Wells and had lunch. Did you notice any blood-like substances inside the home while you were having lunch or prior to picking up the children? No. Approximately how long did it take to eat lunch? Like 20-ish minutes. We were pretty fast. After you were finished eating lunch, what did you do? Um, the kids went and like got their iPads for the car ride. And I just like cleaned up quickly, put everything away. Um, and then I texted Jennifer because Noel couldn't find hers. And so I asked, we had like a family iPad. And so I asked if she could take that instead. And then we got in the car and headed to New York. Did Jennifer respond to your text message? No. So what did you decide to do without her having responded? I just took the iPad. It was a long car ride. <laughs> During the car ride, did you try to communicate with Jennifer? So right before we left the driveway, I texted her our ETA and that we would be at Glorious. Um, and then I just started driving. Um, and then I texted her when we got to Glorious. Did you ever try to call Jennifer? Yes, after we got to Glorious around 2.30 and she wasn't there. And I was supposed to meet Jennifer at Gloria's. I wasn't supposed to go to the orthodontist. I was going to be heading back home, but she wasn't there. And so I called her around 4 o'clock. And when you say Gloria's, just to refresh everyone's memory, Gloria is Jennifer's mom. Is that correct? Yes. And she resides in Manhattan? Yes. And she has an apartment in Manhattan? Yes. And that's where you were supposed to meet Jennifer? Yep. <coughs> Had Jennifer replied to either of your text messages no. prior to trying to call her? No, none of them. If I can just pull those up. So, um, beginning Friday, May 24th at 12.43 p.m., hello, we're home and eating. You all can't find your iPad. Is it okay to take the I oh, iPod? Is it okay to take the iPad? And she does not respond, correct? Yeah. And then you texted her again, leaving now. ETA is 2.30. And she does not respond, correct? Yes. And at 2.30 exactly, you text, just got to Gloria's. Approximately how long after sending that text message did you try to call Jennifer? Um, I don't remember. I think it was around, it was close to that second, that other text message, but we meet you at the dentist. Okay. And why did you send that message? Because I hadn't heard from her. Um, so I didn't know if I was going to, I've been to their orthodontist, it says dentist, but it was orthodontist. I've been to the orthodontist before, so I knew where it was and I brought them. So I, maybe I was going to meet there because maybe her appointments ran longer. I didn't know. Did you go to the orthodontist with the children? Yes, I did. How did you get there? We took a taxi.
Did Jennifer meet you at the orthodontist? No, she didn't. How are you feeling at this time? Um, really bad. My the second I called Jennifer, it's like my stomach just sank because she never not answered her phone. So I was really hopeful that she just got caught up with meetings and she was going to be there. And so when she didn't, she wasn't there. I just came. I was shocked, but also like, okay, I have the four kids in front of me. I don't know what to do. So I just put them in to their appointments and I left, not left. I just walked outside and I started to call people that could have heard from Jennifer. Who did you call? Well, I called my mom who was trying to calm me down and tell me all these things that I needed to call the hospitals because maybe she was in a car accident. And then I called her friends. And based on those conversations, what did you do next? Uh, based on those conversations, I got the kids, they finished their appointment. I got them in the cab and I had Noelle bring Jennifer's iPad or the family iPad, but it was connected to her um, Google and her Apple ID. And so I decided to bring the kids back to their grandmother's. I went in the cab and I went to her appointment because I was able to pull up her Google calendar and one appointment she had that day. So I went to one of her appointments. And were you able to make contact with someone at the appointment? Or at the uh, location of the appointment, I should say. Yeah, they were able to tell me. Um, I just needed to know if she made it. And they were able to tell me that she didn't. What did you do next? Um, I called her friends again, letting them know what was happening. And then I decided to take a cab back to Gloria's. And it was from there that myself and um, Jennifer's friend Laurel called the police. Which police department did you call? Uh, New Canaan. <coughs> Excuse me. And what information did you give to the police? What information did this witness give to the police? <coughs> Your Honor, I'd like to figure out how to process the jury. Overruled. <clears throat> Excuse me, Ron, I apologize. You can answer the question. Um, we told the police that a mother of five was missing and that she was in a very contentious divorce. And I knew that he had purchased a gun, and so I was afraid. And they were on it right away. I don't claim that part. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the portion of the testimony that this witness knew Fotis Dulos purchased a gun is stricken. You may not consider it for any reason. Did you ever receive any communications from Mr. Dulos that night? Yes. What type of communication? Uh, he called me in the evening. And did you answer the phone? No. Why not? I was afraid. Did you eventually speak with him? Yes. And can you describe that conversation for the jury? Yeah. So he called me and I called the police because I wasn't sure what to do. And they told me that um, he's not a suspect, so you should talk to him because I have his kids. And so I decided just to call him back because I didn't want to like anticipate waiting for the phone call. And so I spoke to him and it was a very weird conversation. Um, he asked how the kids were doing but like didn't talk about Jennifer or really what was going on, just like saying, oh, this is really weird, and immediately went into that he had a supervised visitation that Saturday 
um, I think because it was a Memorial Day weekend, so he had a, a day, it was like a special thing, and that I needed to make sure that I left New York early enough that I got the kids to him um, to New Canaan for his supervised visit. And he was just very adamant, like, Lauren, you have to make sure that they're there. They need me. You need to bring them to me, like, be early. And then the conversation ended. And did you also exchange text messages with Mr. Julius that night? Yeah. If I could just pull them up, that's folder two. And um, once again, were these screenshots from your phone that you shared with the police department? Yes. Okay. And um, you indicated to Mr. Julos at 9.49 p.m. on May 24th, hello, no updates so far. Our Laurel is at the police station right now keeping me updated, but they don't have anything yet. They looked around the house, but it all seemed fine. I'm trying to get the kids to sub, trying to get the kids to get some sleep. You, you sent that message, correct? Yes. All right. And his phone responded, okay, thank you. Please call me first thing in the morning. And then you responded, yes, I will. If I hear anything tonight, I'll let you know. Is that correct? Yes. And he responds, okay. Other than um, <clears throat> the phone conversation that you had with him on May 24th that you've already described for the jury, it was your additional communication with Mr. Dulos done strictly through text message? I didn't have any at that time other than that evening. I didn't talk to Fotis at all. Well, I'm referring to um, these messages here um, that yeah. you're seeing. This was after your telephone conversation mm -hmm. with him, correct? Yeah, it was only through text messaging. And if we could just continue on to Friday, May 24th at 11.38 p.m., he asked you, still up, any news? And you responded, no news. They're still searching the yacht kids to sleep. Is that correct? Yep. And then, um, I'm sorry, could you scroll just there? Okay. Looks like there's part of a message that's cut off. It says, thank you. Are they okay? Are they worried? And you responded, they're doing okay. They're worried, but I'm trying to just keep them updated as much as I can to keep them at ease. I'm happy they got to bed. So presumably the children had fallen asleep at this point? I think I was referring to the night before that they got to sleep. Okay. And then he responds, okay, I will see you guys tomorrow. And you respond, okay, good night. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So when he says see you tomorrow, he's referring to Saturday, May 25th, correct? Yes. Okay. And that was for his visitation? Yes. Were you intending on bringing the children for visitation? No. Why not? I was afraid. And I wanted to keep the kids with myself and Gloria. Now, on Saturday, May 25th at 5.39 a.m., he texts you GM, which I assume stands for good morning. Yeah. Lauren, any news? And you replied, called them at 2.30 and 5.30. No news. They just told me that they're still searching and he replies i spoke to an officer at 1 a.m as well is that correct yep and then at 10 a.m he texts you gm lauren again driving down to nc which i assume stands for new canaan yeah and then he continues spoke to officer Patton. he had no update how are the children Children, and you respond, children are doing well, just ate breakfast. And then he asks, are you guys driving to New Canaan? Is that correct? Yes. Did you indicate one way or the other whether or not you were driving to New Canaan? No. Directing your attention now to the next page. The title is, uh, let me scroll. Fotis New Phone. At some point had he reached out to you from a different phone number? Yes. And you programmed it in as Fotis new phone? Yes. Okay. And so this is him with, I, I guess, the initial reach out saying, Lauren, it's Fotis, how are the children doing? Yep. And you said, kids are doing okay, getting ready to sleep. And he responds, okay, any updates? 
you said no, not yet. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Directing your attention now to Sunday, May 26th at 10.59 a.m. Photos do this new phone texts you, GM Lauren, how are the children? You respond, they're doing fine. And he asks, is Christiane with you or is she still with friends? And you replied, she's with us. Christiane was the child that you had mentioned who had a sleepover, is that correct? Yeah. And how did Christiane come to be with you if she was in New Canaan? Uh, Jennifer's friends picked her up. And brought her to Gloria's? Yeah. And then he asks, okay, good, somebody brought her to you. And you replied, yes. He asks, is she okay? You respond, all are fine. He says, okay, thanks. Any update on Jennifer? You didn't respond to that message. Why not? I just didn't want to. Now, on um, Sunday, May 26th, did you um, see Mr. Dulos in New York? Yes. Where did you see him in New York? <clears throat> he came to Gloria's apartment in Manhattan. How did you see him? Through the window. We saw the, his car pull up. And were the police called? Yes, they were. Which department responded? I think it was some precinct, but I don't remember. The New York Police Department? Yeah, it was the New York Police Department. And did you speak with the police? No, I didn't. Well, in the original, I'm sorry, in the original phone call to the police? No, I'm referring to the NYPD. Oh, when they came to the house, I spoke to them. Okay, in Gloria's apartment? Yes. And did Mr. Dulos ever see the children in your presence that day? No. Did there come a point in time when you were asked to um, review photographs of the garage at 69 Wells Lane? Yes. Can you tell the jury when that was? It was, um, I believe it was that weekend in Gloria's apartment, the New Canaan police, they came um, to New York to meet with me and show me pictures. And I'm just going to show these were pictures that were taken by the police department. <clears throat> Is that right, Ms. Almeida? Yes. Okay. So this is, um, for the record, this is within States Exhibit 16. Specifically, this is item number three. What are we looking at here? So this would be like where the open bay was, um, where all their sports stuff was. This shelf in particular um, was where I kept like their camping stuff and their guns and stuff like that. Okay. And um, you had indicated that on Tuesday, May 21st, you had cleaned the garage? Yes. Okay. Is there anything um, not visible in this photo that was visible to you on the 21st in this location? Yeah. Can you tell the jury what that is? Those were the camping pillows that they had for their trips. And where would they have been in this photograph? They would have been next to the sleeping bags on that second shelf. Okay. So, and just for the record, there is um, a shelf and there's two sleeping bags um, underneath um, on the second level, and they would have been next to those? Yes. Okay. And if we could pull up item number four. Oh. What color were the uh, camping pillows? They were white. <coughs> I'm sorry, I didn't interpret that. They were white? So um, what are we looking at here in item number four on that disc? So these are just more shelves in that third bay where we kept like their sports equipment and stuff. And is there anything not visible in this exhibit that you had seen on the 21st? Yeah, there was a cleaning bucket that I put on that third shelf, so on the bottom. 
And was this the cleaning bucket that you described earlier, the red or white bucket? Yes. Okay. And um, directing your attention to the sponge in the photograph, was that on the floor when you cleaned the garage on May 21st, 2019? No, it was in the cleaning bucket. Now, did there come a point in time where um, you and the children were asked to provide DNA samples to the state police as well as fingerprints? Yes. Do you recall approximately when that was? Um, I, remember what, I would say it was like a week or so after we all went to New Canaan. Um, they had an event at their school that day because they didn't go back to school. We stayed in New York this whole time. Um, but we went to New Canaan so they could be a part of this event and then went to the police station to give our fingerprints and DNA. And um, have you continued to be the nanny for the Dulos children since May 24, 2019 to the present day? Yes. And I think you indicated yesterday that you still live with them? Yep. Are you their primary caregiver? Gloria is their primary caregiver, their grandma. Have you seen Jennifer Dulos since May 23rd, 2019? No. Have you heard from Jennifer Dulos since those text messages that we saw earlier on May 24th, 2019? No. I have a moment, Your Honor. Yes. I have nothing additional. Cross examination. Good morning, Ms. Almeida. Good morning. It's actually afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, so you started working for the Dulos family in 2012? Yep. And then you started working for Four Group in 2013? Yes. And that was FOTUS's company? Yes. FOTUS hired you? Yes. And the company consisted of home construction? Yes. Um, and you worked there in the mornings, either 8.30, 9 o'clock? Yep. Until about 2 o'clock? Yeah depending on when the kids came out of school. And during the weekday? During the weekday, yeah. And after that, you went to work caring for the Dulos children? Yes. The work that you did for FOTUS, uh, for four group, at first was administrative work? Yeah. Um, you'd go to the bank? Yep. Sometimes run errands? Yep. Uh, and at some point, I think you said it came uh, to you doing some punch lists. Yep. And that involved you going to people's houses mm -hmm. where you would look at uh, some things that were left undone. Yes. Or needed to be fixed. Yes. And uh, sometimes you would be responsible for fixing them. No, not myself. Okay. I would be responsible for getting the right person to fix. Sorry. And was um, Pavel Gamieni one of those people who would help you fix those things? Yeah, but it was mostly like the subcontractors. Like if it was something with the paint, the painter would need to come back in. If it was something with the roof, the roofer would need to be come back. Did Pavel ever go with you? Yeah. Right. Uh, Pavel worked for Four Group? Yeah. Pavel was an employee of Four Group before you had gotten there in 2013? Yeah. And you left in 2017? Yep. Pavel still worked for Four Group after you left? Yeah. And when you weren't going to the houses to look mm -hmm. at what needed to be done or running administrative tasks, you would work at the office? Yes. The office was at Fort Jefferson? Yes. And that's also the Dulos home? Yeah. So the, the office was in the home? Mm -hmm. um, uh, can you call up what will be marked Defendants C? I believe there's no objection, Your Honor. <coughs> If this yes, can be I, I just have a copy of the... Yep. Yeah. 
So Judge Attorney Felsen is kind enough to show me um, the thumbnails of what she intends on offering. And I guess I have no objection to what she's identified for me as defense exhibits C, D, and E, and F and G. So with that. So is the offer for all of those at this time? Yes, C, D, E, F, and G. Yes, Your Honor. So uh, defense C, D, E, F, G admitted as full. Uh, can you call up what's on number one on yours? And Ms. Almeida, if you could turn around, is this for Jefferson? Yes. And um, the office, can you, can you show, do you mind getting up? Can you show the jury where the, the office is at Fort Jefferson? Yeah, so the office would be this whole space up here. Okay. All right, thank you. And for, can the record reflect that uh, the witness is pointing to the right side of the image of Fort Jefferson above the garage? Um, so it's all the way at one side. The office is all the way at one side of the house? Yeah. And it has its own separate entrance? Yeah, it does. It would be underneath, like where you pull the car in. Okay. So you can basically go in through the garage? Yes. All right. And Bob, can you pull up what's number two? This is Defense Exhibit D. Can you tell the jury what that is? Yeah, so that's the other side of the garage. Okay. So once you drive through, that's what you would be facing. Okay. And did people um, who worked at four group, four group employees, did they in fact park in that back area that you're looking at? Yes. All right. And did you also park in that back area that we're looking at? Yeah, I did. All right. Um, Bob, can you pull up number three, which is defense exhibit E? And this view, can you tell the jury, is this in fact looking uh, from the vantage point at where the four group employees would park in the back of Fort Jefferson? Yep, yeah, that was right behind the house. There was a little stone area where you pull up to park. Okay, and Bob, can you pull up four, which is defense exhibit F? And do you recognize this picture? Yeah. Is it one of the rooms of um, four group, one of the office rooms? Yeah. All right, and that's above the garage? Yep. With its own separate entrance. And did you work in this office? Yes, I did. But did you actually work at this table or something similar to it at the time back in 2013? Yeah, I usually sat at that table and there was a table on this side that I would sometimes sit as well. And other employees worked there as well? Yeah. About four or five, you said? Yeah. Was Mr. Dulos, Fotis Dulos, was sometimes there at the office with you? Oh, yeah. All right. And he sat at that desk with you? Yep. And you worked with him side by side? Yep. And you saw him almost daily? Yeah. And you had an opportunity to observe him uh, with other employees? Yes. Bob, can you call up number five? Um, showing you defense exhibit G. Is this another room upstairs in um, four groups office? Yeah, so this is past the room that you just showed. 
Okay. And would you also work in this room? Um, not usually, because usually that's the room where, like, if he had clients come in, he would use the table there to sit with people and go over things. So clients would meet uh, at the Ford Group office? Yeah. And uh, people would come in and out of the office? Yeah. Pretty regularly? Yeah. Uh, and they would enter through the garage? So it wasn't, like, inside the garage. You could get to the office that way, but there was an outside door that you could get the stairwell that's separate from that's separate from the, that's separate the house, from the house yes. right people would just go to the office but wouldn't necessarily walk through the house yeah yeah so people could be there um in and out all during the day but wouldn't at all interact with the people who are inside the home yeah you can take that down thank you You talked about uh, some other people who had worked at uh, four, and you said that Pavel was one of them, mm -hmm. and he helped you sometimes. Yeah. Um, and there were other people who worked there when you were there from between 2013 to 2017. Mm -hmm. I have one moment, please, Your Honor. Your Honor, I'd ask that um, Defense Exhibit H be moved in as an exhibit. I don't believe there's any objection. That's correct, Judge. The Defense H will be admitted as a court. Bob, can you call up uh, number six? <coughs> okay. Ms. Almeida, did you recognize some of the people in, in this uh, photo? Yeah. All right. And on the bottom left, is that a photo of Pavel Kamiene? Yes. And he was the worker we just talked about who worked at Ford Group from before you started in yeah. 2013, who remained at Ford Group working with FOTUS. Yes. He worked for FOTUS? Uh, yeah, I think at first he was a subcontractor, um, and then eventually I yeah, moved us to an employee. Okay, did he become a project manager? Yeah. All right. Um, and he worked closely with FOTUS from what you could observe. Yeah. And he interacted with him daily? Yeah. All right. Um, how about next, obviously the top left, is that a picture of Fotos Dulos? Yes. All right, and you recognize him? Yeah. All right, and that's how he appeared um, to you at times between 2013 and 2017? Yeah. All right. And next to Fotos Dulos is Guillaume, is it Vidale? I think. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Are you familiar with him? Yeah. Right. Did he work at for a group at the time that you worked there? Yeah. And between 2013 to 2017, was he there during that entire period of time? Yes. All right. How about um, Stefan Reich? Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, he worked at Four Group. Yes. What did What did uh, Mr. Reich do at Four Group? When uh, he, he was, was real estate, so uh, he was an agent. So. Did he places. work with Four Group from 2000? and 13 through 2017, to your knowledge? No, I think he left um, the company when I was there, but I don't recall when. Okay. But I think that they still maybe consulted with each other. You think they kept in touch? I think so, yeah. From a business point of view? Yeah. Okay. And how about Matt Byrne? Yeah. When to when did Matt Byrne work for Four Group? So Matt came in after me, um, but I don't remember the times. Okay. Was he there uh, when you left in 2017? Was he still working for Four Group? I think so. How about on the bottom right, that Ben Corbett, did yeah. he work for Four Group? He did. All right. And did he work for Four Group in 2013 when you were working there? Yeah, but he, I mean, he was younger. He was still in college. Um, so he's finishing college and he would come back for like summers and breaks and he was helping not so much like project managing, but like tasks around the company or things like that. Oh. And then I think when he graduated, Fotis offered him a position. And do you know whether he took it? He did, yeah. Okay. And did he also help around with um, the kids? Ben, yeah. All right. Did he also go on vacations? Yes. All right. How about Mr. Vitale? Did he also go on 
vacations with the family ever? Yeah. All right. So uh, you can take that down. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dulos had a good relationship with most of his employees, it sounds like. Yeah. And he was close with them? Some of them, yeah. And spoke to them pretty regularly? Yeah. And socialized with them? Yeah. For a time, you had a good relationship with him. I did. You considered him a mentor? I did. All right, so when you left working for Four Group at the end of your work day, you went and cared for the Dulos children. Yes. And while doing that, in that capacity, you had an opportunity to observe uh, Fotis Dulos's and Jennifer Dulos's relationship. Yes. And you were able to observe it from when you started in 2012? Yep. All right. And um, you always thought that the dynamic uh, between Fotis and Jennifer was odd. Yeah. Early on in your employment. Yeah. From 2012. Yeah. And it wasn't a typical relationship. I mean, I'm going based on what I grew up with. So um, to me, no, it wasn't. Not like anything you've seen before or dealt with before. Yeah. In your experience. In my experience, yeah. And early on, uh, we're talking 2012, 2013, he took a lot of vacations. Early on and throughout. Early on and throughout. Yeah. Um, he took vacations with the family. Yep. And he took vacations with you as well as the family. Yep. And then he took vacations with just you and the kids. Yep. Uh, did he ever take vacations with just the kids? The two older boys. Okay. And he also went away quite a bit on his own. Yes. From early on. Yes. And um, you didn't know where he was going. Uh, no, early on, no, I have no idea. You didn't know if it was for business? No. Nope. You didn't know if it was a vacation? No. Nope. Uh, you didn't know if it was a ski competition? No, I didn't know. And you didn't know if he went with anybody? Early on, no. And you didn't know if he met anybody when he was on vacation? <laughs> no. All right. And you don't know where he went? No. And as part of your observation of their relationship, um, Jennifer seemed to be totally fine with that. Yeah, it didn't seem to like bother her so much. And again, I was coming from what I believed. Um, he was away a lot. If that was me, I would probably be like, why are you away a lot? But at that time, again, I didn't, I was just starting and I was there just once a week and I wasn't as close with them as I became to be. Understood. And you said you went on vacations with uh, the Dulos family. Yep. Uh, and um, sometimes you traveled with Fotis alone. Yep. Did you go with Fotis, not alone, but alone but with, the, with kids. the kids? Yeah, with the kids. Um, did you go with Fotis alone and with the kids to Greece? I did. All right. And did uh, Fotis introduce you to some women friends of his in Greece? Yes. And did you ever go alone with Fotis to Miami? Yes. And was that prior to or after March of 2017? Well, so it was March 2017 was the first time that I was, like, alone with him and the kids. He would take um, trips with the two older boys to Miami just by himself. But March 2017 was the first time you went with Fotis and the kids to the Miami Ski Club? Uh, yeah. Um, and you went several times that week that you were there to the Miami Ski Club? Yeah. That's a private club? Yeah. Members only? Yeah. Do you know if Fotis was a member? He was. You said he had a boat? Yeah. And all the times that you went with Fotis, the kids also went? Yeah, it was always with the kids. Uh, but Jennifer never went. Jennifer never went. Um, uh, it's about 1 o'clock, uh, Jenny Felsen. We can pick up the direct uh, cross examination after the lunch and recess. We'll take the lunch and recess, ladies and gentlemen, until two o'clock. Please do not discuss the case. Thank you. Your Honor. Proceed. Kevin. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon again. Hi. Uh, we were talking about the Miami Ski Club. I think when we were last mm -hmm. here, um, the Miami Ski Club is a water ski club. Yeah. Uh, and it's members only. Yes. Private. Yes. And uh, 
FOTUS had a membership there. Yes. Do you know for how long FOTUS had that membership? I'm not exactly sure. But uh, FOTUS had been traveling down to Miami for some time? Yes. Alone? Yes. And with the kids? Yes. Uh, for years? Yeah. And FOTUS water skied? Yes. Competitively? Yes. You describe him as very competitive? Yes. And not just in water skiing? With everything. Everything. Uh, had he been water skiing since when you first met him? Yeah. And he taught the kids to water ski? Yeah. And they all water skied? They all water ski, yeah. Some of them competitively? Yes. They had won medals? Yes. Did he teach you to water ski too? He did. All right. And I think he also taught you how to drive the boat? Yep. When you went to uh, the Miami Ski Club in March of 2017, and uh, you met Michelle? Yes. For the first time? Yes. And um, you met her daughter as well. Her daughter was there. Yes. Uh, Your Honor, I'd move uh, into evidence, defendants. I, I changed the numbers a little bit. It's I1 through I-4, I believe, without the state's objection. That's correct, Judge. The defendants I-1 through 4 admitted as full exhibits. And can you pull up, Bob, I-4, please? Thank you. Uh, Ms. Almeida, do you recognize some of the people in this picture? Yes. Is Fotis in this picture? Yes. Is Michelle in this picture? Yes. And um, the Dulos children? Not all of them. Okay, but some of the Dulos children are in the picture? It looks like two of them. Okay. And do you recognize uh, Michelle's daughter in that picture? Yes. All right. And is that at the Miami Ski Club? I think so. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. Do, do you remember if you took the picture or not? No, I don't remember. Okay. But you had been at the Miami Ski Club before? Yes. All right. And um, you recognize Fotis and Michelle in this picture? Yes. All right. And to at least two of the, the Dulos children and his, uh, Michelle's daughter? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Was Michelle at the ski club every time that you were there when you went there in March of 2017? No, I don't think so. All right. How many times did you go there that week? <sighs> to be honest, I don't really remember. But you went frequently? Yeah, the reason for that trip was so that they could water ski. Okay, so I'm assuming you went every day. Yeah, we probably went mostly every day. All right, and you were there for lengthy periods of time? Yeah. And Michelle was there several of the times at least? Yeah. All right. And she was interacting with um, Fotis yep. and the kids. Yeah. And they seemed familiar with her. Some of the kids. All right. And you observed that. It was in front of you. Yes. It wasn't being done in private or in secret. No. And I, I think you mentioned you spoke to Michelle. Yep. And she told you that she intended to move to Vail, Colorado with her daughter. Yes. Do you know, uh, in fact, whether she did that at any point in time? I don't know. Did Fotis water ski a lot? Yes. All right. Um, did you go with him sometimes down to the pond? With the kids, yes. Okay. There was a pond in Avon, Connecticut? Yeah, in Avon. All right, and he would go down there? Yep. All right, and... Uh, would you ever go with him when he competed? Yes. All right. And would the kids go with him and with you when he competed? Anytime I went with Fotis, it was always with the kids okay. to watch him compete or the kids compete. Okay. Um, Bob, can you pull up I-1? Do you recognize the people in this picture? Yes. All right. And is that Fotis? Yes. And is he with one of his children? Yes. Um, was this picture... You did not take this picture, did you? No, but I know where that picture was taken. All right. Do you know, can you tell the jury when this picture was taken? 
Yeah, so we were coming back from a trip, a ski trip. Um, it was around Christmas time, and some of us got on a plane. There was a lot of cancellations and stuff like that, and I wanted to be home for Christmas. So Jennifer, myself, and four of the kids were able to get on a different flight because ours got canceled to be back home, and there was only enough seats for all the amount of that was there. And so there was Botus and Theodore stayed back. And I think it was like maybe a day. Was it Christmas time of 2015, 16, 17, 18? What year was it? To be honest, I don't remember, to be honest. All right, but it was prior to 2019. Prior to 2019. Okay. And um, in this picture, Fotis has a very short hair, correct? Yeah. All right. Had you ever shaved Fotis's hair? No. All right. Um, but, but you do recognize him in this picture? Yes. All right. Um, Bob, can you pull up I-2? This is also a picture of Fotis? Yes. With one of his children? Yes. Um, and even though the date's on there, can you tell um, or give a sense to the jury if, in fact, uh, that seems like a picture taken of Fotis and one of his children in 2016? Yeah, it was probably at the pond, it looks like, maybe, and okay. the one in Avon. I don't know. But about that year? Does that yeah. year seem right? The way Petros looks, yeah. All right. Uh, and Bob, can you please pull up I-3? Uh, do you recognize Fotis in this picture? Yes. And with his children? Yes. Um, was this also at the pond? I can't really tell. No. But was this prior to 2019? Yes. Right. Bob, you can take that down. Thank you. You told the jury that you stayed behind in Miami in uh, March of 2017 for a little while. When Jennifer went back home? Yes. Yes. And then you returned uh, at some point? Yes. Without photos? Without photos. Uh, and Jennifer told you that she confirmed that photos was having an affair? Yes. And she didn't seem surprised? No. And she said she wasn't in love with him and hadn't been for a long time? Yeah. Jennifer also told you when you were in Florida that she suspected Fotis was having an affair. Yes, she did. And you didn't believe her at first? No. And you had worked with him for several years before? Yes. Side by side? Yep. And you thought you knew him? I thought I knew him. Um, did you know that Fotis had been married before Jennifer? At that time in 2017, yes. But it took me some time to find that out. All right. But you, you eventually learned that? Yes. That he, in fact, was married before? Yes. And he was dating Jennifer while he was still married? I didn't know the details. Okay. Did you learn that at some point? No, I didn't. Okay. So uh, before you proceed, uh, counsel, uh, the court has to take a brief recess, not based on anything other than something has been brought to the court's attention. So um, this is not the afternoon recess, ladies and gentlemen. This is just something the court has to address immediately. So we ask that you return to the deliberation room. Please do not discuss the case. Sorry. Please bring the jury in. <coughs> Counsel stipulate? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Mayor Dwyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, good afternoon again. We keep getting interrupted. Yes. Apologize. All good. Um, I want to just close something out. 
And if I had asked you already, and I'm repeating it, I apologize, but maybe I missed it. Um, I think you said at some point in time um, you did not know that Fotis had been married previously. Uh, did at some point you learn that? I learned it at some point. Okay. Do you remember when you learned that? It was a few years after working for um, Jennifer and Fotis. Okay. Um, it was before 2017? Yes. All right. Um, and did you learn that um, he was still married when he was with Jennifer? I'm just going to no. object, Your Honor. Ask and answer calls for hearsay. Well, the question was, did you, what the heard the word believe that he was still married? So the court did not catch the phrasing, Attorney Felsen. Would you phrase the question again as you stated it? At some point, did, um, did you learn that Fotis was still married while he was dating Jennifer? Same objection, Judge. Well, did you learn that Fotis was still married while he was dating Jennifer? And the objection is? Well, it's twofold. One is that she's already answered this question, so it's asked and answered. And then my second objection is that it calls for hearsay information. Well, the objection's overruled. You can answer. Uh, no. OK. Um. <clears throat> After you came back up from Miami and um, Jennifer had told you that she was going to leave, uh, she asked you to uh, go with her? It wasn't right. That it wasn't that night when I got back, no. Okay, but it was shortly after that? Uh, a few weeks after. And you said yes? Yes. And you gave notice to FOTUS that you were quitting for group? Yes, I did. But you didn't tell FOTUS that... Um, why you were quitting, right? No. And the plan was for Jennifer to move out of Fort Jefferson? The plan with myself or the plan with like that? Just with photos. Jennifer to move out. She, yeah, her plan was to no longer live at Fort Jefferson. Okay. And to leave without photos knowing that she was going to leave? She was going to let him know after she left. So, yeah. So she was going to leave without him knowing yeah. that she left. And she was going to take the children without him knowing that she was going to take the children. Yes. And she told you not to tell, obviously, Fotis, right? Yep. <clears throat> you had testified to some, uh, there was tension in the house right? Between, yeah. I would say, when you got back from Miami and then when uh, Jennifer moved out. Yeah, so okay. like the months prior to her leaving. All right. Um, and there was also some tension between you and Fotis, where Fotis had yelled at you. Yes. In 2017? Well, the tension with Fotis and myself didn't really start until after, well, the day I left with Jennifer. Okay. Um, so from about June of 2017, for at least that month, there was some tension? Uh, probably a few months after that. Right. And you had testified that you saw him here in court? I did. It was in this courthouse? Yes. And he approached you? He did. And he was angry? Yes. Um, and then his personality shifted, and he um, appeared to be reasonable? Yes. Uh, and, um, and he also had approached you once at the pond, I think, and had been yelling at you? Yes. And then suddenly switched and became very reasonable. There were several times in which he yelled at me, different okay. occasions of drop-offs. And then his personality just shifted. Yeah. Right. Um, and those were in 2017? Yes. And because of that, uh, you had indicated to Jennifer that you no longer wanted to have contact with Fotis. Yes. So between 2017... Um, 
to 2019, you had very little contact with FOTUS. Yes. All right, you didn't go to Fort Jefferson? No. Um, you didn't know who was living at Fort Jefferson? No. Um, you didn't talk to FOTUS on the phone? Mm, there might have been a few occasions. They were going to a family systems therapy where I would do some drop-offs, um, but that was more controlled, so occasionally I would do that. But there was never really any like calls or texts between photos. Okay, for, so for two years, other than those few times, you really had no interaction with him? No. So I'm going to fast forward now to, um, to 2019, to May of 2019. You were still working for Jennifer? Yeah. And um, Jennifer was living in New Canaan? Yes. <clears throat> At some point, uh, she moved to 69 Wells? Yeah, she originally moved to 153 Chichester, which was in New Canaan. And I think it was a year she moved to 69 Wells Lane. And when she was at 69 uh, Wells, you were working doing child care? Yes. And you were helping organize the house? Yes. In May of 2019, was, uh, were the Dulos kids and Jennifer living at 69 Wells? Yes. And in May of 2019, did FOTUS have supervised visitation with the children? Supervised, yes. And that was on Wednesdays? Wednesdays. And if it was agreed upon other days, for like that Memorial Day weekend, he was supposed to have a visit on Saturday. But that's because it was agreed on before. So okay. there was some flexibility if the supervisor and Jennifer, they all agreed. All right, and you're talking about the Saturday of Memorial Day weekend? Yes. All right, so the Wednesday before it, let's go to the Wednesday before it, that was May 22nd? Yep. And did FOTUS have scheduled visitation uh, with the kids on that Wednesday? Yes. And it was through um, a court-ordered supervisor? Yes. And that court-ordered supervisor would be present when FOTUS met with the children? Yes. And spent time with them? Um, and that had been happening for many weeks prior? Yes. That Wednesday, May 22nd, um, FOTUS had a supervised visitation with the kids? Yes. And it ended up being at 69 Wells? Not the whole visit. But part of it was at 69 Wells? Part of it. And um, Jennifer had agreed to your understanding to allow him to be on uh, outside in the backyard at 69 Wells? Yes. All right. Um, you didn't want to be there? No. Right. And you weren't there while FOTUS was there? No. So you didn't see FOTUS interact with the kids that night? No. And you didn't see FOTUS interact with the supervisor that night? No. And you didn't see FOTUS interact with Jennifer that night? No. So that's Wednesday, May 22nd. Thursday, May 23rd, you worked a regular schedule? Yes. Um, you were in the house? Yes. And I think you had mentioned that um, that Thursday you had emptied out paper towels into the pantry? Yeah, the evening before I left that okay. Thursday. And there were several of them? Twelve. Okay. There was a package of twelve? Yeah, it was the big packs. Is there more than one pantry in the kitchen or is there just one main pantry? One main pantry. And is that the pantry where... Um, Food is also stored? Yes. And the kids' water bottles? Yep. And there's no other pantry, just that one? There's like cabinets and stuff, but the food pantry was just that pantry, yeah. Okay, and the paper towels went in that pantry? Yep. All right. Now, May 24th is that Friday before Memorial Day. Um, you had indicated that FOTUS had scheduled visitation with the kids for that weekend? That Saturday. Okay, did he also have it for Sunday? I don't remember. All right. And that would have been through the courts? Yes. By agreement? Yes. That Friday, you got to 69 Wells at about, did you say 11 a.m.? Yeah, around there. I don't know exact. Time. And you didn't expect Jennifer to be home? No. Because she had plans to be in New York? Yep. And you understood that she had doctor's appointments in New York? Yes. 
And you were going to meet her in New York later in the afternoon? Yes, I was going to meet her at her mom's. After you picked the kids up from school? Yes. That Friday, they had a half day? They had a half day. Because of the Memorial Day weekend? I think so. I don't really know. And you went to the house before you picked up the kids? Yes. I think you testified that um, you went in through the garage? Yes. Through the middle bay of the garage? Yes. Do you remember when you got there um, that there are three garage bays? Yep. All three of them are closed? Yes. And you remember that? Yes. And you used the keypad to get in that, yes. that morning? Uh, and that keypad is only for the middle bay? Yes. All right. and, and when you opened it, you saw that the, the Range Rover was parked in the middle bay? Yes. And that was not what you were expecting? Yes. Because uh, you had expected that Jennifer was going to take the Suburban? No, she, she was going to take the Range Rover, and okay. the Suburban was going to be left. Okay. So you saw the Range Rover there, and, and that wasn't what you expected, because you expected that that would have um, been gone by that time of the day. Yes. Normally... Um, so there's three bays, and the, the Range Rover was in the middle bay. Yes. Does uh, Jennifer park the Suburban in the left bay? Yes, on the left side. Okay, she, she always does that. That's just, just what always, she does? Yeah. Um, even if she's running in for five minutes. Yeah, it's always that, always that one. Right. It was impossible to park in the other one because of the other stuff that was in that bay. It wouldn't have fit through the third bay. The, the kids' stuff? The kids' that, stuff. Got yeah. it. And you had indicated when you walked through the garage that first time when you were walking through, um, you were going inside, were you going inside just to straighten up before you picked the kids up? Yeah, I had the sandwiches with me, so I put them in the fridge. And then, yeah, I usually go before I pick up the kids to straighten up. And you didn't notice anything unusual in the garage when you first went through? Other than the Range Rover being there, no. You weren't really looking for anything? I wasn't looking, no. Did you go, um, when you walked in, did you go to the right of the Range Rover or to the left, if you remember, to get up to the, the the garage door leading into the kitchen or the mudroom. Yeah, so I always go to the right because usually the suburban's there, so it's kind of just habit to go on the side that's empty Got that it. leads through the door into the mudroom. And that door was unlocked? Yes. And it's usually unlocked? Yes. So that was an unusual? Uh, no, that was unusual. So when you went inside, you had uh, said that you saw... Jennifer's purse in the, in the house on the floor? It was in the doorway between the mudroom and the kitchen. And usually she has it on the counter where she takes it with her? Yes. So that was, it was on the floor and that was an unusual thing? Yes. But you didn't go through it at the time? No, I didn't go through it. Did Jennifer usually bring her purse with her when she was traveling? Traveling like to New York, traveling in general. Yeah, it depended. Like she would, she would take her wallet and phone sometimes. Just she would leave her bag somewhere else. It, would, it just wouldn't really be on the floor. So that was unusual. Having the bag on the floor was unusual. Yeah. And you saw um, when you walked in, there was an uneaten granola bar on the counter. Yeah, it was like still in its packaging. All right, you put that away? Yes. And then there was a mug of tea? Yes. And it was full? Yep. You washed that mug? Yep. The mug wasn't, the tea wasn't hot. It was semi-warm. It was semi-warm. And about what time was that? Like close to 11. All right. After you washed the mug, you noticed that you needed... There were no more paper towel rolls? Yes. So you went and replaced those um, that roll of paper towels? I just went to go get a new one in the pantry. Do you recall there being a, a paper towel holder on the island in the kitchen? Yes, it was right next to the sink. And is that what you did? You replaced the roll that was on there, the used up roll, and replaced it with a new roll? Yes. And then you left to pick up the kits? Yes. You went back through the garage? 
Yeah, I went through the mudroom, out the middle bay, closed the door, and got in my car to get the other kids. And then you picked up four of the kids? Yep. And brought them back? I brought the four back to the house. The four kids, you went back through the garage? Yes, we always went through the garage. When you left to pick the kids up, did you shut the garage door? Yes. And then you entered again, you entered the keypad? Yes. And you went back in? Yes. Do you recall if the four children went to the right of the Range Rover and um, walked into the house that way with you? I don't recall. I don't but remember. all five of you um, from school went back into the house? Yes. And you didn't, there was nothing unusual at that point in the garage? Uh, no, we just went right into the mudroom. And again, you weren't looking for anything at that point. Yeah, that's correct. At some point, did you notice that there's, a, I guess, another mudroom door leading to the outside? Yes. Did you notice that that door was unlocked? Yes. That's unusual, right? That was unusual, yes. It's usually locked? <clears throat> it's usually locked. Especially that time of day? Yes. The only time it was unlocked was when the kids were playing outside because it was right directly towards the backyard. But other than that, that door was always locked. So you eat lunch there? Yes. Um, and then you brought the kids to New York? Yes. Everybody went back through the garage? Yep. Uh, it, so it was the five of you went? Back yeah, myself the and four of the kids. And then did you shut the garage door when you left? Yes. <clears throat> At some point during the, the evening, you became very concerned, and you called the police. I did. Uh, and you were giving them information, um, not just then, but over the next couple of days, you were talking to them and cooperating with them. Yes. Um, during that time, when you were talking to the police, Fotis was reaching out to you. He was texting you. Yes. Um, can you, Bob, pull up states 12? 16. 16. <clears throat> That's it. Um, is that the first page of it? Can you go to the next page? This is, that's not what it is. I think it's, may I have one moment, please? Okay, so it will be two within that disk. These are your communications with Fotis, right? Yes. He was reaching out to you while you were talking to the police? Yes. Um, and is this the first time he communicated with you? I can't see on top what time it says. Uh, the first, he, no. I had a phone call with him before that. Okay. Um, Bob, can you scroll down? Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Maybe the next page. Okay. Um, can you see where it says, good morning, GM, Lauren, any news? Yep. All right. And you had said to him, called them at 2.30 and 5.30, uh, no news. They just told me they're still searching. Yes. And, and then Fotis texted to you, I spoke to an officer at, at 1 a.m. as well. Um, what did you take that text to mean from Fotis? Uh, I spoke to an officer at 1 a.m. as well. Um, I read it as he called them, as I did, to speak to them. Okay. Um, and you spoke to the police um, and told them that you were talking to Fotis or communicating with Fotis, right? Yes. And um, did you learn that Fotis, in fact, was not cooperating with the police afterwards? No. You did not learn that? Learn, can you repeat that? Did you, it was poorly worded. Did, did you learn that Fotis, in fact, was not cooperating with the police? At that moment? After. After that moment? Yes. And days, uh, yeah, we learned that he was not cooperating. Okay, even though Fotis told you he spoke with an officer? Yes. All right. Thank you.
<laughs> he was also texting you on Sunday because uh, it sounds like he was asking you how things were doing. Yes. And he actually showed up in New York. He did. Um, he drove down in his car. Yeah, he drove, I believe, in his Suburban. Um, and that was where the children were staying? Yes. You were there? I was there. And it was an apartment? Yes. There's a bellman downstairs? Yep. Did he demand to see the children? Yes. Saying they were abducted? Yes. <clears throat> You'd said that... Um, Fotos water skied a lot. He did. Very competitively. Yeah. But that he was competitive with everything. Yeah. Um, he was also a runner. You've seen him run before. Yeah. One moment, please. Fair redirect. Yes, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Ms. Almeida, you were asked some questions on cross examination regarding Mr. Dulos's travels. Do you recall those? Yes. And I believe you were asked whether or not you understood what he was away for, whether it was vacation or business. Do you recall that question? Yes. Now, in the time that you worked for Forward, you indicated that you had an opportunity to work on different projects for the company. Is that correct? Yes. What states did Forward develop houses in? Connecticut, and I knew that they built a house in Rhode Island. A singular house in Rhode Island? Yes. You were asked um, some questions about the Miami Ski Club on cross-examination. Do you recall that? Yes. When did you first meet the defendant, Michelle Traconis? It was at the ski club um, I, shortly after we got to Miami. I don't remember the exact day. In March of 2017? Yes, March of 2017. May I um, ask the defense call up defense I- <clears throat> Apologize, I should have given you the heads up. Um, Ms. Almeida, do you recall being asked on cross examination whether or not you took that photograph? Yes. I just direct your attention to the date, October 17th, 2016. Assuming that that date and time is attributed to that photograph, could you have taken that photograph? No. Thank you, sir. You were asked on cross-examination whether or not the defendant had moved to Vail, Colorado. Do you recall that question? Yes. Where did the defendant move? Farmington, Connecticut. Where in Farmington, Connecticut did the defendant move? Fort Jefferson Crossing. How long after Jennifer moved out of the house did the defendant move into Fort Jefferson Crossing? From what I was aware, a few months after. Oh, ground. Basis of knowledge. No foundation. Well, counsel. Well, I think it's fair follow-up to the cross-examination, Judge. Well, the response, as the court understood the response, is from what she understands. And so the court does not know the fount of that understanding. And so the court is going to 
sustain the objection. How did you become aware that the defendant had moved into Fort Jefferson Crossing? Uh, Jennifer hired a private investigator and had pictures. And when was that? I don't know the exact time. Approximately. It was like a few months, maybe six, up to six months after the divorce started. I just wanted to clarify, you were asked on cross-examination whether or not you'd ever been on vacation alone with Mr. Dulos. Do you recall that question? Yes. Have you ever been on vacation alone with Mr. Dulos? With the kids, never myself and Bodas. Right, and that's what I'm getting at. There, never just the two of you, correct? No. And you were asked some questions on cross-examination regarding Mr. Dulos's arrival in New York on Sunday, May 26th. Do you recall that? Yes. Could you just indicate to the jury what he was claiming? He was claiming that he kidnapped his kids and that he was demanding the bellman to let him up to get his kids, uh, which we already instructed the bellman not to let him up because at that point in time, he didn't have custody of the kids. If I could just have a moment, Judge. I'm sorry, if I could just have one moment. Yes. Did the Dulos children ever reside with their father after May 24th, 2019? No. <clears throat> Was there a scheduled visit for Sunday, May 26th, 2019? I'm not sure. Thank you. Nothing for moment, Ms. Renner. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You missed up there. <clears throat> Does the state intend to call another witness? Yes, Judge. Just um, before we do, may we approach with a brief sidebar? Yes.